Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning that way if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed. The subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello. All right, I was totally ready. Can you hear me? Let me know you can hear me okay since we're we're getting used to this new microphone. Um, I think I like it a lot better, except that it's huge on me. <laughs> Maybe I need to make like a cute little thing to hold it that, I don't, I don't know, a pocket. I need like a clip-on pocket. I don't know. Um, so I was... I got here on time, but then I decided to set up my camera so that I have iron and serger cameras, which takes a lot of finagling. And um, I just realized two minutes before I went live that I hadn't changed my thread, my needle, or done my interfacing for the project. I got two of those done, but I still need to do my interfacing, so I'm really sorry about that. I mean, maybe it doesn't bug you. Um, but something I usually just cut the interfacing off camera unless I have the time so anyway look how bright it is all right but it is kind of a dark fabric so let me know you can hear me okay and um, the other thing I did at the end of the cutting stream was I cut pockets out there's no pockets on this dress and I I kind of know why I think it's because the cut of the dress might show the pockets, you know, like, or something in them, but I honestly can't live without them. I have one dress without pockets, the Rita shirt dress. I love that dress I wore yesterday. It doesn't have pockets, and I'm always looking for pockets in that dress, and I keep meaning to just, like, fix it. The volume is slightly lower than my two intros. So do you like the intro volume or my volume now? I, I can't turn this up anymore. I can get it closer, but I'm really quiet. Hmm. That's interesting. So let's see if I can. Hi, Karen. Hey, Derek. Hey, Beverly. <laughs> Sorry I didn't say hi. <laughs> um, let's see if I can adjust that. Um, let's see. Oh, it doesn't let me go over 100%. Oh, no, that's not it. Never mind. Oh, yeah, I can't go over 100%. Hello, hello. Cold, wet, chilly. Heat. Oh, my gosh. All right. I don't think I can do anything else. Hmm. I noticed that it is a little lower. I really wish I knew what I was doing. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I can't turn it up anymore. That's so weird. Sounds like I'm far away. And I'm right here. Do you like the intro? Hello. Nello, Ray. Hi, Louise. Hmm. Intro volume's good. You're quiet and I have you on max. It's okay. Is it though? 
Is it though? Let's see what I can do. I wonder if it's something in, hmm. There's just not a whole lot I can adjust. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> um, let's see. You know what I noticed too is that sometimes it's louder on a different one. I don't even have a microphone on that scene. Okay. Let's see. Is it is it louder here? It's not louder here. I can tell. All right. Okay, I added the volume there. All right, well, I mean, I guess my backup plan, I can talk, I can talk a little louder. Um, no one's here today. It was kind of nice though the other day that I could just talk normal. All right, so I need to cut my interfacing. I'm really sorry about that. Right, Ray? I don't want to be an expert in this, this though, you know? There's a lot, someday, I, you know, honestly, I would love to do a video on how to do all this, but at the same time, there's a stubborn part of me. I'm just going to be honest. I really have gone through pain to figure all this out because there's so little information on setting up a live stream with picture in picture. Um, it's all geared towards uh, gaming or Zoom now. So better than a power outage. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> that was so weird. That wasn't even a power outage. That was they shut the power off to this little area and they forgot to turn it back on. Um, I just want to calm down the brightness here. Let me focus on that a little bit. I think mm, I think I can do that. Eh, 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 eh. Okay. All right. So let me. I'm gonna go over here and and um cut out the interfacing for my dress here. At least I have the wireless mic and we can talk wherever I go. So let's see, I need it for the collar and collar stand and the center front placket. I'm kind of thinking of, she even gave me wonderful interfacing to use. And here I am flaunting, I don't have any. Um, I need this piece. All right. I didn't change my thread on my serger. I know. I've been slacking. And I'm going to put the chat on my phone so you guys can see the future. I know how you really like that. Uh, how do I find myself? I don't even know. Um, here we go. Oh, I can hear myself okay on there. Interesting. All right. I don't want to be in the <laughs> camera. <laughs> All right. Hi, Malin. How's it going? It was really well balanced on Thursday. I totally agree. Hi, Serena. Hi, Matilda. <laughs> Defo on the power outage. Yeah, that was hecka weird. And um, I mean, the maintenance guy is very kind in that he will come immediately to fix it. But he's not near. He's actually, dang, I was about to say a city from a town I don't even live near anymore. Um, he is, you know, close. He's like 25 minutes away. That's if he gets in the car and leaves right then. Oh my gosh, I did not cut that big enough at all. Fine. I only need one. Let's get our wits about us, Ceremy. 
All right, so we need this. I'm using a woven fusible interfacing. It's not gonna go to the point there and that, that's fine, honestly. That's in the seam allowance. This itty bitty rotary knife. Really glad my iron's not on. Oh, this feels so awkward. You know, um, funnily, Derek, it is cold here as well. And we had a fire a couple nights ago. Hi, Penny. Noise. You did. How was she? <laughs> That's such a bummer when um, you do stuff like that with someone, especially a kiddo, that is not enjoying it because it really does make it last far longer than it needs to. And that's like three miles, so, you know, even if you walk that, you're, you're there for, a, you know, an hour. <laughs> Minimum. Hi, Libby, how's it going? Ah, that's awesome. Yeah, well, my sound apparently is not the same as it was the other day. And I forgot to put my thread in my machine, change my needle, or do my interfacing. So you didn't miss a gosh darn thing, Libby. So I think what I'm going to do here is cut out one inch wide. I, need a, I guess I don't have a ruler right there. I have a billion rulers. Nice clean one. And... Um, I'm gonna try and go for straight. That's my aim here. All right, this actually looks to be cut on the grain. Oh my gosh, you guys, you know what I forgot to mention about my fabric haul in my fabric haul video, and I really wish I would have, was the fact that they cut all of my fabric on the grain and I, I must remember to say something about it because people say it can't be done and I watched them do it on every single one of my fabrics and I was absolutely delighted and and they do it kind of in a painstaking way they pull a thread for almost everything or they tear as well but I was really surprised because um, you can actually feel the grain when you're cutting along the cross grain on the fabric. You can get really good at it, and it's kind of unnecessary to pull a thread on things like eyelet. <laughs> Hi, Eliza. Eliza, I saw you in someone's stream uh, yesterday. It was so fun to see you. I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was Jay Stern. She's pretty cool. Yes, I lurk in live streams. <laughs> I keep bribing her. Just like, That's it. Oh, it was girls on the run. So she knew she was going to do that all year long then, right? Because, like, that's a program in school. So she was probably doing that, right, through her school all year. I mean, I guess it's a pandemic, so maybe not. Oh my gosh, Eliza, you've been doing yard work for a week? Are you out of school? I saw Adina's done with her um, finals. That's pretty exciting. Here I am just, I'm just chucking stuff on the floor right now and that, I'm gonna pay for that later. So let's, let's stop doing that. Oops, okay. That's awesome. Yeah, she does a lot of really great um, fitting -ish, fitting uh, videos for uh, pants and stuff. And I really like that sometimes she has before and after pictures. That's pretty cool. Well, she has before pictures and not as often the after pictures. But um, still, she puts herself out there and I have mad respect for that. That's pretty awesome. It's really helpful. Hi, Sue. Welcome. 
I'm so glad. Hi, Ursula. How's it going? Terry. <laughs> Terry, Terry, Terry. Hola. <laughs> and Terry's like, eh. <laughs> Sounds like Ray has something to tell you. <laughs> Oh, nice, Eliza. Yeah, this is like the time of year where everything grows so fast. Oh, <laughs> oh, Penny. I have been there. I have so been there. You know, I have a daughter and it really feels so recent. It's all very fresh. I definitely have, oh shoot, that's moved. I've definitely blocked out certain things or just kind of been like, yeah, I don't want to think about that anymore. Um, but I will say like my, you know, it was, it was hard for my daughter in school. Like there was a few things that had happened and um, really affected her outlook on school when she was this really bright, promising student. And then something happened and um, it really changed everything. And I remember, I will never forget that this year, you know, she graduated a year ago. This year, all during August and September, I made myself appreciate that we didn't have first day of school or first couple months of school or school at all because ever since middle school, it had been so hard. And I just really made sure I reminded myself that we are past that now. And I'm very, 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 very thankful. It's good to remind yourself of those things because it's easy to be like, hallelujah, hallelujah, we don't have to do that anymore. And then you, um, you really don't fully appreciate that you don't have to do that anymore. And just like those experiences, like girls in the run, that's really awesome. But it doesn't mean that it comes easy. Like some kids are just like, oh, I don't really want to do this. And then they love it or whatever, or they look back on it and they're like, I want to do that again. And you're like, wait, you hated that. <laughs> um, and that's great, right? That's, they just needed, they just had anxiety about it. They get past it. And then they're like, well, okay, that wasn't so bad. I know, I know what to expect. I think that's it, right? You know what to expect. You know, you can do it. Not, not knowing if you can do it or not at that age is really, really hard because you don't want to fail. There's so much more um, pressure in, on yourself. All right, so I didn't show this in the Deer and Doe Mellow Low video, my little snarky sew along that I only got one thumbs down. <laughs> um, and um, this is the placket of the center front, and the Mellow Low is the exactly the same. So you iron it along the notches, and now I know where to line up this piece of interfacing. So I will say you need to be kind of accurate because if you fold this over and it doesn't quite reach like that, it is kind of a bummer, right? So um, maybe you trim it. Maybe this didn't, maybe this was supposed to be three quarters of an inch. That's probably what it is. Well, gosh darn it. Another cool day. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm so glad, Sue. Well, we really love having you here. They, all these folks are so awesome in here and so nice. And if you are looking for a pattern or a fabric or um, anything, they are such a great crowdsourcing <laughs> place to go. They help me out so much. We have a Facebook group, too. I will admit, I'm not the biggest Facebooker. I'm constantly learning how to, oh shoot, eek, how to use it. Remember, I feel like they change it all the time and I'll be like, wait, where did that spot go to add new people that are requesting to join? But that's also a, that's a nice, pri more private place because you know it's not living forever in the live chat of a YouTube video if you want to ask or even show fitting issues. Everyone's welcome in there. I think if you type up, uh what is it you guys is it exclamation point socials social maybe in the chat it there's oh i don't know maybe it's exclamation point facebook i'm sorry i don't know loves learning but hates going to school yeah right eliza 
Well said. You're all blushing. Aw. You are amazing. You guys are really awesome. Like, I am really proud of the fact that you guys are all so awesome. That, that you spend time in my stream. Hi, Sutter. How's it going? And, and you know, take the time to comment and reply. Um, I really appreciate it. I feel very flattered and just proud of the fact that I've attracted good people. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I spend way too much time in the gaming world, don't I? <laughs> in gaming streams. <laughs> I'm just trimming this down. Sorry. I guess it wasn't an inch. This is what happens when I don't... Um, remember like I get flustered right before the stream and then I start just like willy-nilly doing stuff and then it takes longer you know it's kind of like when you're late somewhere and then you start rushing and then it takes five times longer to get out the door yeah that's what we're working with here 90 degrees what the what All right, we're getting there, you guys. Yeah, right, Serena? <laughs> yeah, you know, um, we ended up um, finding a, an independent school. All right, so I'm not a big fan of ironing directly on interfacing, but this woven stuff is probably a little easier. So I'm just putting it in the crook of that fold line that I just created. I'm going to try and be straight because <laughs> that will help me later. Yeah, and, the, and this independent school it was really interesting because it wasn't just like they said, here you go, parents, you teach them. Um, there was definitely lots of parent involvement, but... Um, they also had on, for high school age, they had on-campus classes. But what they would do is because they had the independent component, the kids only needed to go to some of the, like, more intense classes, like, say, um, you know, upper-level English, math, things like that. <clears throat> Those were, like, two one-and-a-half-hour classes a week. That was it. And then um, maybe your other classes where like maybe you had one other on-campus class I'm just kind of trimming that off and then I'm going to get this interfacing on here better so she only had to go two and a half half days a week so so she went two half days and then one hour another day and that's it and then the, she had a, like one completely independent study academic class and then um, a PE that was independent, which was very easy for her to do because she loves hiking. So that worked out so great for her. And they had the exact same curriculum as the public school. So it wasn't like what I had thought that was going to be like. And so when um, the pandemic hit, the school was so well set up for it. They got bombarded with people wanting to join it, but I don't think they could handle it at all, you know. I didn't quite get all the way, cover up all my interfacing, did I? You forgive me, right? All right, let's do this one now. Your old ironing board. Ooh, that's a good question, Matilda. I feel like we um, talk about like irons in here, but just for an ironing board, you know, like I think I bought mine at Target. You know, I didn't do anything very sexy. This this isn't it, um, but the one I use at home and the one I have here, I have two, you know, real, real full-size ironing boards. And um, they're just probably from Target or Bed Bath & Beyond. Like they're nothing... I do like the kind that has an iron holder, but I haven't found that I tr trust putting it like this in the iron holder because I feel like this, the water will leak. That's awesome, Serena. 
because I do feel like my daughter is a little gun shy of going to college. She wants to, which surprises me, um, but she didn't just chomp at the bit to do it. And I was all about that. I was like, yeah, don't worry about it. You're so young. <laughs> don't worry about it. I think it's um, a really great place to go to get the kind of interaction and socialization with peers that is pretty pretty necessary at that age. It's really good to be away from home and to do that. Even if you live at home, it's still good to have that campus time, you know? Um, but I also think that so many people change their passion three quarters of the way through college and they feel like, wow, you know, maybe I shouldn't have started so young. So I'm fine with her waiting. Whenever she does it, it'll be good. If she likes doing it and wants to do it, heck. I mean, that's such a great experience, right? Oh, I missed Eliza's. Wow, that's awesome, Eliza. Like, she really took to that. You love parents like me? Well, Serena, I don't know. I, I, um, if I were, if there was ever someone to be interviewed about being a reluctant parent and being honest about it, it'd be me. <laughs> because um, I, I was, I was a very, I didn't show it to my daughter, but I was a very anxious parent. Like I was, ooh, it took some adjusting for me. In fact, <laughs> I was really late when I was pregnant. Like, um, I think I was 11 days late, like, for, like, to go into labor. And at one point, I looked at my husband and I said, do you think that I'm late because I'm so nervous about being a mom? And he was like, yep. <laughs> and my husband's rarely blunt. <laughs> it just kind of cracked me up. I was like, yeah, me too. And I remember thinking... Oh, dang. I didn't trim this narrow enough. So, you know what? I'm going to make my placket a little tiny bit wider. Do I want to do that, though? This is the left side, and my placket's going to go over. Arg. But I don't want to see my interfacing. But I remember when my daughter came, and I was like, wow, I have no clue what to do. Um, and I had a ton of trouble nursing because I have had a breast reduction. And so I had lactation consultants at my house. Like it wasn't very private and it was just so anxiety inducing. And that's a whole other thing I could talk about too. And um, I remember thinking, okay, like I, I'm always this person that's always trying to rally myself, right? And, so, and to kind of give myself backup plans so that I feel com more comfortable facing the day. And um, I have always probably had a little bit of anxiety, but for something about having a child really escalated my minor anxiety into full-blown anxiety and it was probably some sort of like hormonal change that did it because it wasn't just a psychological thing it was like it was just big and so um I remember thinking the first month she was live I was like okay all I gotta do is get her till she's 18 and then I'm done it's gonna be okay that's a long way off and now my daughter's 18 and moving out, I'm like, oh my God, that is so hilarious. I thought that I'd be done when she was 18. <laughs> and I would never be like, see ya, bye, you know? <laughs> I think that's so funny that I thought that. So naive, but that's what I had to tell myself. <laughs> Hello. All right. I can't put a face cam on that. Um, that camera on that scene over there there's just I have too many cameras right now oh nice Val I saw you say hi earlier I hope I said hi to you oh that's awesome Eliza your iron core gets stuck at the iron parking thing so I tend to yeah the mesh boards I haven't seen that yeah well that is true Serena that is exactly what my anxiety was based in. Um, and I don't know. Do I feel like I did a good job? I don't know. She's an amazing kid, but, um, you know, 
I don't think that's just me. <laughs> I think that there's so much you're just born to be in it and it doesn't matter how you parent someone. You got to really give yourself a break because I know I, I was really good about certain things and she's not, didn't really go that way. And it's like, okay, well, I did my best there, you know, so. I don't know what a mesh board is. Iron mesh board. Can I Google that? Like, what do you Google for something? Like, I'm using a wool mat here. Ironing board mesh. Steel mesh top ironing. Wait a minute. Durabilt. What is an ironing mesh? Um, I'll, I'll look and show you what I'm finding. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to do this. What is an ironing mesh? Oh, like a cloth. What is a mesh protector for? So is this, <clears throat> is this just something you put on your board? I think I'm not searching for the correct thing. Protective. Oh, I have never heard of this. You know, this kind of um, heat preventative, uh, heat resistant thing, you can get and you can just bind your own, like bind around the perimeter if you want it to be cute. Oh, I don't know what this is. <laughs> sorry. I am not an expert in doodads and gadgets and gizmos. I'm really sorry. Or machines. You know? Anyone else know about that? Yeah, Penny. I had that lactation consultant too. Hi, Karen. Right, exactly, Karen. And I didn't have that option. In fact, a lot of people were like, Oh, it's so great you work at home or you have you can just bring your kid to work and I was like who can do that yeah yeah exactly and um, I was the first of my friends to have kids so I didn't have any of them to go to and ask questions to and I think that's really helpful made okay an actual board made from metal mesh oh with a, oh, interesting. Particle world of science. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll eventually probably fall apart. All right, let's get to this. We're not even sewing yet. So this right here is my side front. We're going to put the collars at the bottom because I'm pretty sure it's the last step. Um, the first step's probably doing the... So... Sorry, I haven't announced what I'm making today. So I'm making the deer and doe blue A dress. And there is also this little um, bow on the back that's completely optional. But I think I'm actually going to do, ooh, it's a little bright right here. It's just decorative. I made one fit modification on my dress form, and that was kind of a pretty severe shoulder adjustment that I given a go and I added pockets after the stream when I realized there were no pockets on this so yeah ironing on a wooden table yeah hey Sydney with a met see my ironing board if I take the cover off it, it's holy yeah my mother is a nurse <laughs> my mother is a nurse but I was very um she would be the first to tell you this too. I was very weird about anybody like helping me or anything. Like I was just like nervous Nelly central. Um, I need a piece of fabric to just uh, sew on. You guys know me. I like to, when I change my bobbin, I always sew a little bit on a piece of scrap fabric. I have paper here because we're going to try and do timestamps. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> yeah, right. Like I'm going to. 
I can't even see the time, so yeah, we're not gonna do timestamps. But I'm gonna say about 11.30 is when we started sewing. And I'm going to try and follow the directions somewhat in order. So let's do the bow. Wait, did I do the bow? Did I cut that correctly? Because if I didn't, it's not gonna happen. Oh, I also added a sleeve using my sleeve pattern from the Scout tee. I only cut one of these. Gosh darn it. Who was paying attention during this stream? That's it, lots of small holes. Hmm. Meta mesh, of course I need pockets, exactly. You know, you understand. This, okay, so remember how I was like, look at all this extra fabric. This is all I have. <laughs> After, pockets take up kind of a lot, you know? Just pin that on there. Yeah, so yeah, for the sleeve, um, you can make this dress sleeveless, or there is a little cap sleeve <clears throat> with the word sleeve in quotes because it's not technically a sleeve where it surrounds your arm. It just um, goes to the if it, this is the armhole, it's only going like right here. So it doesn't go all the way around the armhole. So you'd still have to finish your sleeve, your armhole with binding. And so um, that cut of the sleeve is super unflattering on me. Um, and I have a very full bicep and I don't really want a sleeveless garment. So what I did was I took the Scout tee and um, that's a sleeve and an armhole that I've worked on and, and made my own. And so I laid the armhole on this dress. And so, and mind you, I actually didn't think to do this till I had already cut it out. It was my first stream back, give me some slack. <laughs> so um, I was a little bit like, ah, I forgot to do this. So I didn't do, so normally when you add to a sleeve, okay, wait, that's not what I wanna say. So when you, um, usually, let's see, is that dark enough? Okay, this is, this is your armhole right here, okay? Say that's a sleeveless armhole. So if you needed to make this into a, an armhole that has a sleeve, you would go down and out like this. So this is your new armhole, all right? So the purple is your new one. Oh, so bright. So you need to give yourself a little bit of ease and it needs to be a little bit more comfortable. Um, and with a sleeveless garment, you need it up high and closer fitting so that you're not seeing inside the garment or the dress. So because I hadn't um, thought of doing the sleeve modification earlier for some reason because we talked about it I laid the scout armhole on and it was pretty close so all I had to do was really drop it and then I just used my scout sleeve so did you show how I created the whole sleeve instead of the cap so Eliza I just used my scout and in that in one of my scout videos, I'm pretty sure it's the um, first time I sew it. So it's like a kind of a delicate floral. Well, there's the deer. Um, that one, I know now, I think thanks to Malin a long time ago, who kind of gave me a heads up, hey, you know, the grain line armholes are a little bit tight and they are, they're tight on me too, because I do, like I say, I have kind of a big 
bicep. Um, I have broad shoulders. And so I've learned, I wish I would have known this with my Tamarack. Um, I usually just drop all those armholes three quarters of an inch. And they almost always, that's all I have to do. That's just my own personal thing. Doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just like, that's how I fit in those patterns. And so when I did that Scout T, this deer is galloping right now. Um, I um, ended up also making the sleeve have more ease in it. And it's quite a bit to ease in. Like you're going to see me probably struggle a little bit. And I know you're going to love that. So, um, but that sleeve fits me really nice and I really like it. So I did add some pockets, Claire. <laughs> Pressed wood shavings, a uh, particle board. Yeah. Yeah, Matilda. It's the screen <laughs> all the same. Yeah. I mean, you could recover it. Yeah, I know. I didn't really draft them, but I do have my pattern piece here. So if you want to draw your, make your own um, pocket pattern, this right here, this length right here, it's one and a quarter of an inch here. This is a notch. It's five and a quarter of quarters of an inch here, one and a half inch. And this is the notch. This, this would be the hand opening right here. This right here, it's, a, it's about like ten and a half inches from here to down the depth here. This width is seven and a half inches here. So if you want to draft your own pocket, that's kind of roughly what you do. And then you need four of them. Um, and so I think this is a total, yeah, of eight inches. Yep. That's what this eight is. So this is eight, seven and a half, ten and a half. You can make it any size you want, but this is the general dimensions I have. And I just use the same one for lots of things that don't have pockets. So, all right. So the steam allowances are five eighths, um, and, then, and then I'm probably going to trim them off of the arm, uh, neck hole, neck hole, neckline, and um, collar pieces. So, okay. This fabric is great, isn't it? This was a needle sharp box that I bought. All right, so where did I put the instructions? So I make sure I stay true to my school. All right. All right, so we're just gonna do this little bow first. And you're gonna do the long sides. You know, I saw someone, uh, I, when I took my, oh, maybe this is what made me think of talking about the groomer the other day. And I was like, why did I bring this up? Um, the gal there, I was in a sewing, a quilting class with her once. And so, you know, I was like, oh, we go to Trailblazer. That's where we take our pets. And yeah, that's what school you work there. So I ran into her the other day there. I hadn't seen her in a long time. But there were these really cute little bow ties for pets on the counter. It was really cute. Hi, Barbara. How's it going? I'm going to trim off the excess because they say to. I don't know what this bad cutting is here, but you see nothing. So this fabric is a stretch cotton. So it's a stretch woven. It's going to green because it'll steam. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, because my table that you see me ironing on with the wool mat is also particle board underneath. Fold the rat bow into right sides together. Well, do I go this way? Wait, is this the same size? No, it's not. All right, so I guess this is the way I do it. All right. Oh boy. I'm like looking at the directions. <laughs> now remember everybody to put live chat on. So at the top of the chat window, 
it says top chat or live chat and you want live chat on so that you can see all the chats. Because sometimes it will filter out people's comments and we've never figured out why and what the rhyme and reason is. All right, I probably should have ironed that open before I turned it. See if I can get it in there flat. Yeah, there we go. We're gonna edge stitch. My, my flowers look a little bit sideways. two again. Hmm. So this is going to go around the bow like this, right? So I'm wondering, maybe I, I think I'm going to do a little French seam here. Can I do that? You know? Why not? Let's do a little French seam here. Because they're like, finish it with a zigzag. I don't have one of those. <laughs> nice. That's awesome, Barbara. I know. I would really like to get to my little quilt project on my table over there. But I've just been so inspired with a lot of the things I'm doing for the stream lately. So that's what I've been working on. All right, so there's my little circle. Turn it right side out. All right, and then we'll just press this and edge stitch it uh, before we need it. Oh, we need this right away? We do the back first? All right. All right, so we need to still decide if we're overlocking or French seaming. So I did end up putting part one on this video just in case we do that because I think it'd be kind of a long project if we do this all today. Um, I will if you guys vote serger, but if you vote uh, French seams, it's going to be two-parter. So it's up to you guys. This is my thinking. This is my thinking. If we do it all today with the serger, then um, Wednesday I will sew underwear. If not, we'll do part two on Wednesday. And then Thursday and Saturday are block drafting streams, or at least talking about making, getting our own blocks, right? And then um, I will do the underwear another, I will definitely do the underwear with you guys, the ones that we cut out when I did my pajama tank. It just won't be then. A fine fettle. <laughs> oh, that's right, your hand. How is it doing? Local-ish? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of just open this a little bit. And then it'll probably go on that edge a little better. <laughs> I'm not trying to convince you guys to do the serger. I will definitely do the underwear at a different point. Let's give the surgery a go. All right. I love how you guys are like, fine. <laughs> I mean, as someone put it, I do have a new surgery. Um, and this would definitely not be a project I would use a surgery on. So I think I should in that way. OK. 
Okay, so then I'll go like this. I'm gonna iron this actually. Do you usually iron the inner facing to the fabric before you cut it? That's, that's, a, I like that. Um, you cut the inner facing first, iron to the bottom, then I fold and press the fabric around the thing. Yeah, that's kind of how this one was, right? Because I, I folded, I, I had to iron those folds in there first to know the placement. Otherwise, it's kind of like floating it up, floating in the middle, you know? Look at how cute this, I haven't done something cutesy on my clothing in a really long time, but I do like a back interest, you know. Was I supposed to edge stitch the bow? I think I was. Do I need to edge stitch the bow? All right, while I'm here, let's um, thread my serger. I got it all ready just in case you guys voted serger. Look at my poor serger cones. Sometimes I dust them with air. Do you guys ever do this? There's probably some rule against that. And then these things get so brittle. That's how I know some thread can be potentially expired, but this is not old thread. This is actually thread I bought well, I was about to say how long ago I bought it, and that's going to make it sound old, but it's from my factory. Yeah, I think adding the bow to the back, it just kind of breaks it up, and I'm kind of about that. I keep reaching down there for my thread. Oh, you hate having the inner spacing the seam. Yeah, I kind of agree with you on that. Um, it's it, for certain things. I agree with that. Just using this as a garbage can. I put my. <laughs> I put my um, interfacing in here. Is this the machine with the threader? All right, let's try this again. Um, how, how do I do this again? Okay, wait. Yeah, that, I mean, that's pretty nifty. I, I have to like, <laughs> I have to admit. This one I'm having trouble with. It's like you gotta like pop it in there like you're flossing teeth. There we go. I mean, that's a little less painful to watch me thread, don't you think? Especially since I never use tweezers. The serger gods gave me tweezers and I never use them. Pretty good. It's a little tight. God, 
God, it's so, it's so, so easy. All right. And, um, I didn't get to say hi to you, Rob. Nice to see you. I used to interface something before I cut it, and I'm trying to remember what it was. It was something I was sewing often. All right, so let's see here. We have the... Um, side back and the center back. What do we like for our, our bow here? I'm just gonna edge stitch this. And then um, I'm gonna bring the camera down a little bit. Sorry, it's so bright. It's so bright. Be so nice if I just had a but I mean, I could put the auto thing. There we go. I'm not a huge fan of top stitching this. I feel like it kind of makes the edge a little bit too crisp, you know, like, uh, I think people who are fans of a bow probably want it to be a little softer, but I will say, I think the advantage to it is that it potentially, potentially won't need like ironing <laughs> and ironing this little spot would probably be kind of tricky. Like say this was got all wrinkly here, you know? So yeah. Yeah, doesn't really say any strategies to do that. Waste notches. Let's hope they're there. <laughs> right? Um... Oh, you, you uh, center it. Okay. You center it on the notch. Cut off this little bit extra here with my tiny, tiny little scissors. This is kind of loose. Okay, so see I fell short right here, so I'm just gonna trim that off. I don't think it's gonna skew my bow in any way. The bow curve is not quite the same curve there, but it does kind of sit nice. It's kind of three-dimensional. See, it's kind of poking up. So I think the issue is that, you know, remember my seam line is like way over here. And so I could end up having some wrinkles. So maybe it would be a good strategy to stitch a little closer to your seam line so that you are kind of preventing that from happening. You know, you know what I mean? Why not set yourself up to make it a little bit easier? Right there, so that, that I just stitched at a half inch. So <clears throat> I personally, the way I would like to do this is I would sew it with my 
straight stitch machine and then I would overlock it. And I think if you're new to sewing princess seams and you're nervous about those that curve, the convex and the concave going to each other, that is the, definitely the best way to set yourself up to succeed. Um, but you can totally do it with your serger first if you want. I really like having a seam and then my serger threads. I like a space between it. And my old baby lock did that. It had a five thread um, where it had a safety and the um, overcast separate. And I, that's my favorite kind. I like having a wider seam allowance. Um, it, it gives you a little more leeway later on and I just feel like it's a nicer finish personally, you know? It's not like it's a right or wrong way, it's just personal, so. All right, so you see this huge angle right here? So remember how I'm always harping on the seam allowance? Um, so that's because this line is parallel to the edge at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Sorry, I'm, I'm struggling to find 5 eighths on here. <laughs> so there, so if I put the ruler at 5 eighths of an inch, lining it up on that raw edge, that point is right there. So that's the seam line. So it's a really nice indication that, oh, okay, I'm going to line this up to here, and I'm going to sew at, on that point. So with doing things like this where you have um, the curve, the, ba the, the back's going to be easier than the front. The front's going to be the harder one. Um, yeah, and I saw someone say something about notches. They always have trouble because there's not enough notches, especially on the Berta pattern. So, yeah, um, you can add more notches, but what you want to do when you do that is you want to measure on your seam line and say you're like, I want one every four inches, right? <laughs> so you just measure on your seam line. All right, on the seam line, not the raw edge, you know, okay, here's one at four inches, and then you're going to go perpendicular from the raw edge to that four inch mark, and you do the same on your other piece. So you could set yourself up with more notches by doing that. Um, the other thing I want to say is it's really important to sew accurately the seam allowance on princess seams with the curved, with any curved seam. And I know I'm not always the best at that, so just know that I'm trying to be a good example. My fabric is also stretchy, so I'm trying to avoid stretching it. But you're going to have a better time if you are matching, or not matching your notches, you're going to have a better time, if, obviously, if you're matching your notches, <laughs> um, if you're sewing on the seam allowance. I can't find that notch. That's it, right? Yeah, there, that is it. That's it. Okay. Try and, try, try and line it up uh, perpendicular. You'll know what I mean when I say perpendicular if you have a notch that's not lining up, like it can line up at an angle. And it's kind of cheating, and sometimes you see that, you know. So I just like to say, all right, that's my non-negotiable spot. Those are supposed to line up. And I think that there's advantages to sewing a straighter edge to a curved edge with the straight edge on top or the curved edge on top. There's, there's good things and bad things for both. What's vibrating? So, you know, you don't want to really come at this at an angle, like pulling this over at an angle. You kind of want, you know, you want to make sure you're starting to line it all up. Make sure you're not getting any wrinkles in your bow because I feel them in there. I have another notch here. Perfect. Like I said, the back is going to be pretty easy to sew. I, I really loved how, I always have a little magnet right here. This is from sewing pattern holders. This is like the last one sitting here. And I always like will stick, like if I have one pin, I just stick it there. These pins don't stick, it's so annoying. Like there's a billion ways to corral pins using a magnet and I don't use those. Um, I'm not a big fan of that. And the fact that I want it like once in a while use a magnet to hold my pin, I'm like wait, aren't there like a billion magnetized things out there. Oh, like that per lined up perfectly. I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> I'm 
because we all know that I'm kind of cavalier when I go do cutting. All right, so let's, um, this one we did with the curved piece on top of the straighter piece. I would argue, wouldn't you? Eh, they're both curved. I was going to do this one the opposite. We'll put the back on top of the side back and let's see if we feel like it's easier, but I don't actually think this is a good example because these curves are about the same as each other, but we can try it on the, the front. The front's a pretty drastic curve. All right, so I just kind of get it going and then I look for my notch. Here's my notch, my non-negotiables. Yeah, you know, Ursula, I actually do think there are some bodices where you actually do have to ease it. And then the easing will happen on the side front. So the side front curve is a little bit bigger. And the way you can check before you start sewing is just measuring on the seam line and seeing, like, is it a quarter inch different? And you're going to have to, like, ease that. And usually you're easing it on the fullest part. The part that's the most visible. Isn't that nice? <laughs> the part that you don't really want to have to ease anything, you know? Look, when I, when I tacked, remember when I tacked my bow closer to the seam line? Look at this one. I actually didn't get that um, fabric very flat. There's a little bit of movement in there. I'm, I'm gonna let it slide. It's not, doesn't, it doesn't really bug me, but I'm just showing you that I'm not accurate. <laughs> I think you guys all know that though. Isn't there another notch? Uh, oh, there, I'm almost to it. All right, well. You know what I saw on the news today? Do you guys know what an NFT is? a non-fungible token. Have you guys heard of those? This one's a little bit off. Um, I'm not gonna really let it, I'm not gonna ease it down here. There's no point. It's much better just to trim off this little extra than to ease it because you don't really need to ease the lower hem of your dress. That'll make it kind of hang funny. Oh, that's a good tip Libby just gave you, Ursula. Yeah, that is true because I noticed that, um, you know how when sometimes when I talk about, well, my feed dogs are pulling my presser foot because I'm pushing towards, you know, I'm going like this, right? So the presser foot's obviously not moving, but it is the illusion that it's, you know, pushing on my fabric like this, right? Whereas the feed dogs are pulling like this. And so um, you can also adjust the pressure of your, <laughs> look at my little, why weren't you guys gonna tell me this is like floating out in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> you guys are definitely not bugged by that kind of stuff. I think about you guys all the time, making sure everything's like lined up and parallel and you could care less. <laughs> all right, let's see how I did. You know, this was this was pretty easy to be honest, but that looks pretty nice. A little bow, you know. It kind of blends in there, doesn't it? Yeah, that is true. You can't see if any wrinkles happen. Good point. All right, so we have our back. I'm trying to let you Let's zoom out. You know, I struggle with if my camera should be on the, like over here, uh, right here, because we don't use that, you know? All right. So we need to overlock this, but, and you can look, you can see the easing that happens. See this piece here is flat. This one is ruffled. It's not easing. I didn't ease it. Uh, I just mean that the seam allowance, see, this is why you don't want to measure, um, that's, this is a, a good example of why your cut edge is a different length than your seam line, right? 
because it, you know, flared out. So yeah. All right. We have our back, so we need to iron that, and then we need to overlock the edges. I hate dropping things. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely, Ray. And it's just knowing, do you need to do that or not? And then so I think like figuring out like, okay, is this actually gonna need it? Do you really top stitch this? Pin and stretch, wait. Pin and stitch each center front to its corresponding side front. Notch and finish the seam allowance, then press them toward the center front of the dress. Top stitch the seam. Oh, you do top stitch. Oh, interesting. I'm actually a big fan of that, especially since we're overlocking. All right, we'll do that when we do the um, backs. Okay, we're going to do the plackets right now, and we're gonna do the side front to the back, center front, I mean. Ursula's all maybe, maybe. Ursula's skeptical. <laughs> all right, so remember we got our placket on here. It's very stiff. I'm going to go from the top down. I know that usually your garment's to the left, but it's because I know my other one will be on the side. So I just want to do both of them from the top down, do whatever I'm doing to the same one. Now you don't really want to get torquing. It's not that you don't really want to, you don't want to get torquing on your placket here. And so I find the best way to do that, like I'm not even pinning it because we've already ironed the heck out of it with all the interfacing. But one of the ways I do it is I'm gonna hold it here and I'm actually gonna hold it here too. And I feel like just kind of gently holding it firm prevents it from doing this where this edge gets pushed while this one's being pulled and then I end up getting this kind of action, you know, it kind of torques it. So I just kind of tell it, no. You're not moving my layers of fabric. I've already decided where those are. So my hands are acting like the pins, you know? It's such a long placket that I, how many of you have gotten to the end and your placket's like, hanging off the edge a quarter of an inch. <laughs> and you're like, oh, <laughs> that happens to me too. <laughs> yeah, good luck, Ursula. Yeah, and I, I agree with Libby. So personally, I feel like narrower seam allowance is always better when you have to do stuff like easing things in. Damn it. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna take that out because I don't want to backstitch right there. I caught my corner of my... That's really how I sound when I'm sewing by myself. It's not snark, it's cuss words. Yeah, I think, yeah. It, I, and it's, it's why like this time when I do the um, collar and collar stand, I'm gonna turn the seam allowances down. I really wish I'd done that on the mellow low. Because uh, that fabric, that polyester was pretty unforgiving. And I, there was a point in that video where I was like, you know what? This might not work out. <laughs> I may have to take this out. And it ended up being all fine. But it was that really wide seam allowance. It just makes those little um, technical areas kind of tricky. go. All right, now we're going to do our um, princess seams. Can we rename those? I never like the name of those. So this one is pretty big. <clears throat> the deer and doe instructions don't give any indication that I need to ease. 
pin and stitch each center front to its corresponding side front. That's all the instruction there is. <laughs> so there should be, usually there's a notch either on either side of the fullest part or at the fullest part, and there's not. There's one right here. Did I just miss it? I have one right here. So what we could do also is tack it, right? So see how, you know, you want these perpendicular to each other like that, right? Like that. And that's my non-negotiable. I'm not used to my cart being on my right side. Feels really far away. I have another notch here. Uh, I feel like I'm missing a notch at the top. You know? I was pretty good about notching my notches, though. I don't see any on either of these pieces, which is, come on. <laughs> Are they, Louise? Yeah. I'm, um, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. Um, I mean, that is what you need to do, right? <laughs> so remember, you're lining up your, that point there, because that's the seam line. So how do we feel about this? Let's try it without any easing stitch and see how it goes. There's a lot of bias that is on this um, curvier piece. You gotta be really careful that you don't stretch it at all. Oof. That is one wicked curve there. So in a factory, they wouldn't get any, well, in a budget factory, they're not gonna get any extra tools or anything. I'm a little misaligned right now, so I'm trying to get it back on track. So I find that sometimes if I hold my pieces separately and I just kind of ease them together as I'm going, that helps a lot. Rather than trying to get them to line up before they've they're close to each other because they're not intended to line up until the spot of seam allowance that matches up to it is on top of it. That's such a weird jumble of words to say all together, but um, it doesn't feel like it's gonna line up and it's not supposed to until the corresponding spot is there, right? <laughs> That looks pretty good. You press your seam allowances towards your centers. So let's try this one uh, with the curved piece down. That makes me a little nervous. Just like Libby said, <laughs> I can't tell if I'm getting wrinkles. But what I like about it is that I'm not trying to curve or manipulate the one that's the difficult one, you know. So let's just see. Oh, I didn't do all my pinning. Hey, Noemi, how's it going? Yeah, I totally agree, Ray, about seam allowance. I know um, Adina does a ton of Berta patterns. <laughs> really, Malin? <laughs> oh, wait, what did you get to see? What's cool to watch? I want to see. What was it? I missed it. 
can't see it. Um, okay, let me just put my, line up my notches here. I'm only doing this because you're here, but um, I think this is a good, it's good to have your non-negotiable points, you know? And, and not just pinned randomly. Make sure that you've got this perpendicular because it's got to line up here, you know? See, there's a notch here, but I didn't, I get, didn't get one on the bust. So that's my bad. I thought it was pretty good about doing all the notches this time. Yeah, see, this feels easier to do it from this side. It doesn't, it's counterintuitive to me though. I really want to unpin this so I can kind of manipulate this a little bit better. Oh my gosh, stop it. So remember, you're just trying to line up where it's supposed to be, like, meaning this spot on the pattern matches this piece on the pattern, you know? So you're not trying to line up the entire seam. Okay, I, get, I take it back. It's easier to do it with the curved piece on top. <laughs> that was a little, that felt a little weird. I felt a little bit like I didn't have it um, lined up perfectly. Oh, Louise. Oh, okay. Well, good. Yeah. No pesky details. <laughs> oh, no, Emmy. I don't, I, I, I was about to say something that was going to be so amazingly naive and ignorant sounding, and it was going to be, That, uh, there we go. Why? Hmm. Okay. Sorry, I just whacked it. Is it back? It needs to be charged.
Okay. Can you hear me? All right, I'm just adding it to everything. Okay, you can hear me? Is that okay? <clears throat> Loud and clear? Really? It's so far away. It's so much louder and clearer. You know, I wonder if it was low on battery and that's why it was lower today. I don't get it. I really want this to work out, but I don't, I'm feeling not confident about it, you know? All right. We're going to iron. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering, we're ironing now. <laughs> I'm a little worried about my um, camera stuff, too. All right, so um, I'm wondering then if that microphone, I see I charged it, so I'm kind of surprised and it looked good, but I'm learning. Actually, I'm gonna surge these first. We're gonna surge this first. Let's get all of them straightened out a little bit. There we go. All right, so when you're overlocking this kind of thing, what I would do is I would put the one that has all the ripples on top because if you do it this way, it's almost certainly going to creep out because see, it wants to pull this way. You know, whereas when you do this, the bottom one stays a little further away, but you need to be really careful as well. So the other um, thing to think about when you're surging is if your surger and your surger is going to push this way, and it's worth doing a test about this, but um, if your surger seam allowance, I mean, is going to push that way, you might want this side on top anyway because it's the nicer looking side of your surger, but naturally it may want to you might want the wrong side of the surging because that na might naturally push that push the seam allowance that way so it's worth testing to see what your serger naturally wants to push one way or the other Right, we're getting into this curved area. Um, I don't clip seam allowances before surging because I think it looks nicer when I let the serger do it because trying to keep my knife along that edge sometimes you know I'll kind of veer away from it and then I'll get like loose threads but you can if it makes you you know more comfortable go for it All right, so I'm gonna try and keep my 
nice side of my serger still on this side, so that means I have to start at the top on this one. Just make sure all of this is pushed under there. You can even pin it, like pin your uh, pieces away from the seam allowance. Your pins aren't in danger of getting near your serger knife. So I just had a fold there. Do you see that? Let's see if I can push it in there a little bit. It's, it's fine. But you can also clip your seam allowance, but I'm not a big fan of that. When you're done at the end, make sure you keep this away because I sometimes will get a little bit lazy at this point and all this starts going like over here. So you don't want that to creep back in now that you're at the home stretch, you know, at the end. <clears throat> yeah, and the reason I gave you that serger tip with the right side of the serging and the wrong side and see, look at this is the uh, right side, theoretically, right side and wrong side. A lot of people can't tell the difference. And on my machine, it's actually pretty nice looking on both sides. You know? Um, but I worked somewhere where they were very, very aware of that. And we would surge things so that the nice side showed. But it also didn't mean that the seam wanted to lay that way. Sometimes it's the opposite. Yeah, right, Beverly? That exactly. Exactly. And I'm trimming like about a quarter of an inch off. like finding the knife on the serger that's just one thing I'm just not a big fan of looking for it to cut my threads with because sometimes you'll cut like three of the four threads and the fourth one's still attached and then you pull and you kind of pull your stitching you know so a lot of times I just use my scissors I'm not used to where the knife is on this one yet on my uh, baby lock it was right here I could see it And if you're new to overlocking and surging, I usually use this thing, these two thing, this the, this hand to kind of hold this so that I don't let things creep under, you know, and I can kind of feel it. I like to also iron from the um, top side. And that is really important too. If you're using thread that is a little bit heat sensitive, you should just press from the fabric side. Are you guys talking still about the um, uh style style arc oh and you know one tip if you have a fabric where your seam shows you know you can do things like um oh, i have this little this is a little too big but i made this it's just a bunch of layers of stiffener all messily chopped up and i just top stitch this piece of fabric around it like it's no big deal 
And I used to put this inside of our accordions and iron out any wrinkles if we got any. And I also used it for the tack button stuff. So, um, but you can make something that's a little bit thinner and still kind of has a nice edge and you can put it between your seam allowance and your dress, you know, or your, uh, your seam allowance and the outer fabric. Sorry, let me use my words to prevent any of this kind of that ridge showing up there, you know, it's just like kind of like a press cloth, but you want something a little stiffer that's easy to kind of insert in there because you still want your seam allowance to go this way. And another tip, tip is do your seam allowance that way, but don't go all the way over like I was. And that'll help as well. This fabric's not too bad, but it, it's not 100% cotton because it's got stretch. So I can get some of that shiny stuff. Yeah, cardstock, that's a good idea. That totally would work. Paper works great. Paper is a natural fiber. <laughs> the fun thing about sewing a dress with princess seams is I feel like it's almost faster because you don't have the waist seam or gathers or anything like that. So, you know, now we're at the point where we're going to put the side seams, shoulders together. Wait, what am I doing? And, um, oh, that is what I wanted to do. Oh, that's funny. Okay. And then we'll do our sleeves. And would I normally press this? No, I would just go for the top stitching. I feel pretty confident that I can just pull it taut. I don't have to iron it. Did we do both fronts? I feel like we didn't do this one. Yeah, Serena, exactly. I know, I know. I tend to get a little bit sloppy and will let them creep in there and then I, I really regret it sometimes. Especially if it makes it shiny. I hate that. <laughs> All right. It's looking good. Give me your microphone. Trusty microphone. I feel like my arch that holds everything is a little push to the limits today. <laughs> All right. So I'm assuming we're now going to do our shoulders, our side seams, and our sleeves. I, I kind of expect like, like, okay, this will be all shoulders and side seams. And literally you go from shoulders and side seams to the next one's hem facing. Oh, you weren't supposed to stitch the placket yet. My bad. Because you have the facing. Arg. That's a bummer. But we, we can fix it, but still. Sometimes the best laid plans, right? Definitely having a struggle stream today. <laughs> we have those from time to time, don't we? Yeah, that shine. No one likes that shine, right? Stop it. Now make sure you put your left and right fronts on here correctly because it's pretty easy to swap these by accident. Sometimes your neckline and your armhole look really similar, you assume. Let me do our 
our side seams. Towards the, this uh, pattern has you do it towards the center. Oh right, my, my armhole, I know. Oh, pockets. I added pockets. All right, let's put the pockets on. And uh, I think my armholes won't line up because I didn't trim as much on one as I did the other. So we knew that. Yeah, exactly. So I put my muslin, remember when I made the muslin out of um, Swedish tracing paper the other day? I put my muslin on me to determine where I want my pockets. Pockets don't come on this pattern and I have a feeling it's because they'll be kind of visible from the outside, but I just really need pockets. <laughs> so I put my notches on here to match. So I think like, I think I'm going to pre-serge these spots. I haven't done uh, pockets that aren't French seam in a while. So let's just pre-serge this. You can go around, like go down your side seam <clears throat> and around your pocket. It's not the easiest. Oh, Ray, thanks. <laughs> oh, that's cool, Malin. I'm glad. Yeah, it probably is kind of weird to see it from one side to the other. It feels so small in here right now, but I was just looking at this other empty office thinking if I had, well, just I was just checking it out. And um, it, I was like, oh, this one's bigger. And it's not. I just have a lot in here. So thank you, Ray. Where's your alert? There it is. I was say, I made it longer. <laughs> a little longer. All right, so we're going to overlock these. And... If you want to do the thing where, okay, I'm going to attach my pocket and then I'm gonna do my side seam and go all the way around and do the serger, go for it. But I do recommend at least pre-serging this little short seam here and this little short seam here. Or you can do it where you can, um, this is actually, this would be a good method actually to show, where you can attach your pocket on here and then we, we surge it all at once. But we still need to do the perimeter of our pocket first. So let's do that. The height of the pocket. So I put my muslin on. Um, I just kind of held it up to me, Eliza. But I feel like a good spot is your high, high hip. Did I put it on the cover stitch? Yeah, I did. Okay. So I'm just doing around this round edge. It's a little overkill using a four thread, but it's fine. Why are you rumbling? There you He was longer. Five to I went from five to twelve seconds. when you are determining your you know your pocket height um, on the garment the thing to think about the way I look at it is where's my hand going in and these two notches here are the opening so just remember that when you are trying to position your pocket on your garment that you're like if you're looking at where you want this edge to be then remember that that's what you have picked to be the determining factor but usually I just use my opening so then I just line up this top notch to where I think my hand wants to go in the garment. So just remind yourself that that's how you do it. Don't accidentally pick this as your top of your pocket and then use this as the top because then your pocket will be a little low. So 
I like to, I put my fingers here and I pivot. Now, this is giving me a little trouble and it's because it's a stretch fabric. You can't probably see in there, but it start, it's trying to like not lay flat. It is though. I'm trying not to pull too much because I don't, you know, I don't really want to stretch it out. dark over there. All right, let's cut these apart. We're going to attach them to the dress and then we're going to serge that whole long section, mainly because I could have just overlocked this too, but then um, this wouldn't, this little opening right here wouldn't have been overlocked. All right, let's line up my notches. I'm going to sew it on, you know, like just under the 5 8 inch seam allowance, you know. Make sure of because I have that one discrepancy between my armholes is that my notches line up. Oh, I actually don't have notches on both, that's why that's how I got around it. <laughs> I only did it on like the fronts or the backs, I can't remember. I only did it on one. Oh, this one has it. be a little easier to do if you hadn't done the shoulders first but we forgot we added pockets if you don't have pockets you can just skip ahead when it's not live <laughs> I think pockets add a little bit of a tedious step. I mean, I, have, I obviously never skip the step, but you have to do all of it four times. And uh, you know, there's always been that one garment where you're like, oh, I got them uneven. And then you go to sew them together and they don't line up and then you're removing pockets from your, both your fronts or both your backs, whichever one you decide to go with, you know? And um, that's such a dra drag, but we all know it's worth it, but it does add a little bit of a like, oh, I have to do this four times. I think French seam pockets are lower profile. It, it doesn't feel like it because the thickness that you create with the French seam, that's not a very even seam, is it? Um, you feel like that might be a little bulky, but it's a little narrower. And I think serger stitching shows up more personally. I don't know about what you guys think, but definitely does seem like the serger stitching shows up more sometimes. Of doing this a little awkwardly because of those shoulders. All right, now we're going to overlock the side seams. Should 
be trimming a little off. Huh? Hi, Leia. How's it going? I'm trying to decide, do I want to like cut down on this uh, seam allowance right now? But I think I'll leave it. I don't know. My uh, <clears throat> tension of my serger is, it's not optimal for one layer of fabric. I'm gonna finish my shoulders while I'm here as well. How have you been, Leia? Hey, <laughs> you're late, it's okay. <laughs> Any time is a good time. <laughs> I think we might be here for a bit. Why is that vibrating? You know, I'm really surprised how much adding rugs makes my machines vibrate. That's what it is. It's not the cameras. It's the machines. Because the rug is so gushy, this is whole, this is vibrating. I can't see it or feel it. But that's what you're seeing. I know, right? I think I should trim it too. I did on the uh, princess seams. So now I'm in this awkward, if I trim it off, that's trimming a lot off. Oof. Because uh, of the, because of the pocket thing. All right. Where are we at here? We have one shoulder, two side seams. All right. So can you see like my machine likes sewing two layers of fabric right now, a little more than just one layer. Once I get the hang of my serger, I'll be able to easily um, adjust that. On the baby lock, it's really easy to do. I will say that. <laughs> Uh-oh, really, Emelyn? Do you not like what I'm doing? <laughs> All right, we have one more side seam. Where is it? Okay, I got those two. I've got this one. Here it is, right here. I don't like these threads right here. I want them gone. Even though you guys say I'm loud and clear, I'm still kind of moving the mic. You tend to surge after too? I, I do that a lot. I like I like having that seam and then the, the serger. All right, so now one more seam. A lot of work for putting on pockets, huh? I'm gonna go up from the bottom because my armholes don't line up. I still need to trim that one armhole. I kinda wanna do, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a narrower seam allowance just to give myself a little more ease. That'll give me a, a whole inch. 
I go down to like a 3 8 and then I don't have this issue of the um, seam of the uh, wide seam allowance you know with the serger the only thing that changes is how my sleeve will set on and that doesn't really bug me too much because my sleeve has a ton of ease in it so there we go serger is a little thick. I don't like doing two separate layers because of that. I really do need to figure out the uh, calibration too when I go down to a single layer of fa fabric. I should have figured that out. I should have taken the time to figure it out, but I feel like we're doing this whole dress. I want to get done. Come on, machine. Why are you acting like that? All right, so we're at this pocket. Let's try and stack up your seams here. And then I'm just gonna go just to the left of this seam here, up and then around. You can kind of double check. Is your seam lined up right there? Make sure you're spreading this apart if you didn't iron it. So that it's nice and flat and uh, there's no like little bump. Clear the decks. You're sewing, are you sewing kind of late, Melin? Do you always sew this? Like, cause I know it's right before bedtime for you. Do you usually sew in the evenings then? I used to love doing that. Like, um, well, it was after when, after when I was in college. But I used to love to watch old movies and have them on in the background. I remember like the luxury, like the first time I had my own sewing room and then the absolute luxury of having, we had like a little spare TV because probably when I moved in with my boyfriend at the time, he had a TV and I had a TV. And back then cable companies were like, sure, you can have as many TVs as you want hooked up to the cable. <laughs> and cable was actually just a few channels, <laughs> like wasn't a big deal. And um, there was no internet, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> And um, let's go past that seam there. And I could put it on like AMC when it AMC only used to have old movies in my sewing room. It felt like the height of luxury. All right. That looks pretty wonky there. Look at how far over I am there. How do I like that? I'm not sure about that. That was a little awkward coming from bottom, from the bottom and going to the top. I'm gonna smooth this out a little bit. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell, maybe you can tell because of the quality of stitching, but my machine's not really liking this fabric right now and I can't tell what it is. It's a brand new needle. I'm thinking, maybe the thread's a little heavy. I'm not quite sure. It's not impossible or anything. It just feels kind of weird. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it. But the uh, serger thread is pretty thick on here. All right, let's make sure we have a back stitch right here. Sometimes it lines up on one side, but it doesn't line up on the other side, so you gotta overlap a little more than I did. All right, and there's the little bit I need to trim for my sleeve. I'm 
Making it the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on the side will also help my, um, that thing I was showing at the beginning of the stream with dropping the armhole and going down and out when you're putting a sleeve on, if it's a sleeveless. <laughs> oh, that's smart, Melin. Yeah, I think um, that whole, it's like that whole knitting thing, just one more row, and then you end up going, why did I do that last row? I was really tired. It's the same with sewing. We'll start from the top on this one, but we'll just do it by lining up our pockets to figure out the uh, armhole up here. It's kind of fiddly. It's a lot of dress right now. It's dressed in, and you can probably hear how crisp it is. It kind of, I don't want to say it's clingy. I feel like you would know this fabric if you felt it. But it's, it's grabby. That's what the word I want is. It's kind of grabby. It's not like I got so often I'm doing like a linen or a rayon and those are a little bit more slippery. Drapey. Oh, I know why I had to go out a little bit. It's because I did a I did a 5/8 seam here at where I attached the pocket. When was one of you going to remind me of that? Thing. I just saw like a thread flaw go through. Like I saw it go, oh there it is right there. What the heck is that? Look at that. Um. No thanks. I'm kind of surprised how many flaws are in thread sometimes. <clears throat> All right. So let's see. Next we have our sleeves. And then, um, or wait, we're supposed to do the facing. Isn't that funny that they have you do the hem? I guess you really need to know that you want the hem. Where am I going with this? Well, do you guys feel like when you were learning to sew, I don't know, maybe that's not the right question I want to say, but I feel like when I was learning to sew, there was a tremendous amount of emphasis put on the fact that you need to try the dress, skirt, pants, whatever, on before you hem it, right? And so, but so many patterns now, I feel like don't give you that opportunity. And this is definitely one of them. You know what I think it is? I think it's because my presser foot is kind of on this thicker surging. That's why it's, it's um, feeling like it's not sewing smooth. I think that's what it is. So, you have to have the placket done in order to do the collar. And you have to have the um, facing on before you do the placket. So hopefully you like the length of your dress. Or you figure it out before you do. Yep, try on before hemming, right? Hi Michelle, how's it going? Did I miss your, I, if you said something earlier, sorry. <laughs> All right, we're evening up this armhole a little bit. Okay, so I need to put the facing on before the placket is stitched on. So we'll unstitch a little bit of the placket. Oh, and then our pocket, here's our pocket. Mm 
and then once we iron it, it'll be pretty much invisible. And that's because I like to, like you see, I don't know, maybe you can't see, my seam is just on the outside of where the pocket is attached, and that way it kind of is recessed a little bit. And you can actually play with doing that even more so, and even drafting your pocket to be even more hidden than that. This is pretty thick. So hopefully it won't show on the outside because this is pretty lightweight fabric. It's not too lightweight though. All right. The, this big thing of thread, oh, there's a big thing of thread. It was clinging to the wall like um, static. <laughs> nice I've been really appreciating some folks will comment on a video and say I always lurk and I, I love that I love that they're confident enough to at least say hi in a comment because um, lurking is totally fine some folks don't have YouTube accounts and they don't log they or they don't log in they can't comment or chat in a, in a live chat and that's that's just how it is it's fine I don't even think I knew I had if I had a YouTube account or not until I was streaming. So I'm just removing a little bit of this, and I apologize that I put that on. That I sewed this placket on sooner than I was supposed to. It uh, I was just sewing it in the normal order of operations for things, and um, I saw you know there's very little like the instructions aren't very long on here. On the thing and when I saw that you iron right here I was like oh that probably says iron and sew it because literally they'll put like six things you do in this one little tiny paragraph so I just assumed and I shouldn't have assumed sorry all right so we're gonna put our um, facing hem facings together the side seams and then you're gonna sew it to the bottom of the dress and then when you go to do the placket it's gonna kind of neatly fold over facing and look pretty cool yeah, right, Louise? I think so, too. <laughs> okay, so um, where's our facing? So all that's in our bin after that is the collar, collar stand, and sleeves. You lurk a lot? Yeah, I do too. Oh, was the camera all weird like that? <laughs> all right. So this looks like the center bag? No. Oh, that's a collar. <laughs> I'm just gonna see if I can tell the front from the the side seam from the front. All right, so there's the side seam. Your back is on the fold. So I like to just get these sorted right away. Like put them together, hold them. I just hold it. You can pin it. That way you don't get confused. You don't need to finish these edges. Okay, I don't want to do at 5 eighths because I did more like a 3 eighths, right? Now it's zipping along because it doesn't have that um, bulk of the searching. Well, if I finish this whole dress today, Maybe I could put um, snaps on the center front. <clears throat> I could wear it tomorrow to my birthday party. <laughs> you know, I'd have a new dress for my birthday party. That's kind of fun. That's a motivator. All right. Let's line up the center back. I'm 
I'm gonna do give myself a little notch here. I gave myself one on the facing. There was I don't think there was 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 one on the pattern. Um, I just find that to be really helpful. There it is. I lost it for a second there. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. All right. So let's line up our side seam here. Press the side seam towards the front if you put pockets in, towards the back if you didn't. The sun's coming out. Yeah, Ray, that's a motivator. Except for all the buttons and buttonholes this thing needs. That's not a motivator. So it's going, it looks like it's going all the way to the final fold there. See that? So it's going to this second notch. It's the graduation weekend here. Um, that is always the thing with my birthday is that it usually coincides with graduation weekend. Is it, you know, with the university. And so the last thing I want is to go out to a restaurant when it's like that. It's like... I would know people didn't like me if that's what they did for my birthday. I'm actually going to press these seam allowances towards the back because my seam allowances on the dress are pushed that way for the for the pocket. And that way it kind of is evening out this thickness. Now one thing since I'm surging this, I just realized what I could do is I could have overlocked this edge right here. This, this facing is so wide. Isn't it wide? You know? Yeah, it is a good birthday party dress, huh? Let's hope I can finish it. All right, so my seam right here is a little bit uneven. You see this? I had one that just wasn't quite even. And I could, you know, line it up like go towards the shorter, but honestly, I feel like that makes it pull funny. The seam allowance is wide enough that I'm just going to let it be shorter. See that in there? Like that. That's what it naturally, like it lines up better if I do that. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. No one will ever know, it's in the seam allowance. I make sure I'm pressing my seam allowance. That's interesting. Didn't we press our seam allowance towards the center back? Oh, I never top stitched. Oh my gosh, this dress is a fiasco. I never top stitched my princess seams. What a terrible sew along. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't ever think to do that. I never think to top stitch on a dress the princess seams. I'm actually happy that I did forget, but I, I would have done that as a, uh, you know, to stick, stay true to the pattern. All right, so let's undo this a little bit. It's a little bit industrial looking to do that, you know, um, and I think in certain fabrics, it's great. I'm just unfolding my little placket here. And it would be good to do it before you put your facing on because you want to, you want your top stitching to go straight through the hem. You don't really want to back stitch above facing. Oh, Beverly. That's so funny because I, that's what I said. I, will someone wash my car and inside and out from, <laughs> all right, we're going to edge stitch it. And then they like to, I mean, understitch it, sorry. You're supposed to blind stitch it. You're not gonna make me do that, are you?
Yeah, right, Libby? No one would notice. All right, so we're gonna understitch it. So I'm pressing the seam allowance towards the facing. That's understitching is always pressing the seam allowance towards the object you just attached to your garment. Because that object is usually the thing that is going to the inside of the garment, like a facing around the neckline or a sleeve hem or um, anything that you're usually attaching to the garment. And understitching means that it's going to kind of help conceal this from kind of creeping to the right side and, and being exposed along the edge. Why is this so... Oh, okay. One of the little seam allowances was like folded, that's why. I can't even see the thread that's on here. This is the kind of fabric that grabs every thread. And you don't know it. But this, this print is so pretty. I wonder if it's still on the Needle Sharp site. Threads, threads everywhere. So um, I could just overlock this. Oh, I stitched through my placket. Arg. Don't do that. Good thing I don't backstitch under stitching. All right, this is still needs to be loose. And so this understitching so makes it so that hopefully it keeps this piece to the underside of the garment and not doing this like creeping out like that. All right. So now I could overlock this and I would probably do it a little narrower, turn it up and then just top stitch it down. Because uh, who who thinks I'm really gonna blind him this? <laughs> it's um oh it's not just a wish it usually happens. Oh that's nice. I'm glad to hear that. It is it is kind of like a poplin, but it's stretch. It's pretty stretchy actually. Which is pretty cool. I'm kind of curious if it's on her on her website still. I could show you we could read it about it a little bit. Um Well, if you Google needle sharp box, you get the wrong kind, but my computer knows me. <laughs> Let's see, um, what's this called? This is the, what? Oh yeah, oh, it's sold out. So the, I think the fabrics that were available, well, I just see this one here. Stretch Poplin. Crisp Drape Smooth Hand. Hint of Stretch. White and Raspberry Flowers. I didn't get Skittles. <laughs> I want Skittles. <laughs> right, Beverly? I haven't heard of Blind Hemming for years. But member Nancy has her fancy new Blind Hemmer. I wonder if Terry ended up getting one too. <laughs> oh man, my glasses are still hurting. All right, I'm gonna overlock this. Um, I think I'm gonna do like half the amount. I, I don't even need to. I could just fold it up, honestly, and stitch it down. What do we think? I think this looks nicer. So let's iron that.
<laughs> I didn't get my my uh, Skittles. She gave me probably Smarties because I remember. Uh, wait, wait, was it Smarties? One time I got Smarties in my box and I don't know. Oh, it was the one with the anvil in it and they got um, squished and there was Smarty dust everywhere. And I was more sad that I didn't get the Smarties. <laughs> so I'm just going to fold this up. This is a little unconventional. You could blind him ears if you want. Oh, that's right, Terry. But you got your new industrial. Have you had a chance to play with it? Good night, Malin. Sleep well. Have a good Sunday. All right. I uh, think, so I could have just, I could have ov just overlocked this edge, laid it down and top stitched it down. That'd be pretty wide hem, but I love that look. I think it's kind of classy. It is, the hem is a facing. Um, so I think there's a few different ways you could do this. You could, um, you know, blind hem it like they say. You'd have to finish this edge somehow to do the blind hemming. I decided that I'm gonna fold it in half and then top stitch it down. I really like it when the hem is filled up with fabric or like flat, like it's an even amount, uh, even thickness in the facing. And, and the reason I like that is because, oh shoot. Um, the, the reason I like that is because I feel like when I wash it, it won't wrinkle as bad. You're cutting a uh, sewing a bias cut. Ooh, which one? Or did you make your pattern? I'll fix that. Hopefully I'll remember to fix that little boo-boo right there. Oh, this is just going the wrong way in general, isn't it? Yeah, this needs to be fixed right here. I don't like my side seams being twisted. Wait, no, 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 no. This is the front. No, 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 that's fine. That's fine. I just need to fix this little thing right here. Okay, I'm already at this front. I thought I was on the other front. All right, focus, focus, focus. She just let go of a lot of machines though. <laughs> she's working up to when she's going to be a streamer or at least a content creator on YouTube and she needs all these machines. That's going to be her shtick, right, Terry? <laughs> oh, you copied your face. Oh, that's the dress that you just copied. Oh, cool. That's great that it's on the bias. I feel like that even makes it more forgiving just in case you don't get it exactly like it was, you know? That'll be great. Terry's home for retired machines. <laughs> That's right. You have the embroidery machine because you made the pocket bucket and you embroidered it, which was really cool. <laughs> you, oh, you are darn. Yeah, I don't blame you. I, I feel like that took me a while. I was just thinking this week about how um, I don't have t 
time to hang out in a couple of streams that I really like hanging out in. And it's because I can't really do that when I'm recording a video, you know? And I don't see that changing. And it just makes me go like, how did I have all that time to do that before? Because I felt really busy. But honestly, it was just probably because it took me so much longer. Where, where did I catch this? Am I being too in? This is caught in this seam right here. Yeah, it's caught in that seam. Which means if I have to fix that, I have to take out a little bit more of the understitching. So I'll just do that really quick. I definitely feel a little bit like I wish I would have started sooner but I was pretty into what I was doing. So you just can't do it all. And um, I'm one of those people that has no shortage of interests or things I would, wouldn't mind being good at, you know? Like I, I would have been fine with so many different professions. Oh yeah, yeah, thank you. Better. I don't kill the messenger, never. <laughs> that is true. That's a great way to look at it, Terry. All right, I just wanted to fix that little spot. I think for the menswear patterns I'm going to be sewing, I want to do one of them not as a live stream. Now that'll enable me, I think, to do more. Um... I'm trying to decide which one. So I have three patterns decided and I want to add two more. And I have your guys' list and I want to go by that. Maybe I would do the underwear again, but my husband was like, I really don't need any. And I was like, okay. Because <laughs> I was having him pick, pick out fabrics and stuff. Okay. So I'm going to stitch this down. See now the way I would really like to do this is I would like to, let me think about this for a second. Do, 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 do. Um, I did this a little differently. Wait, like this, like this, like this, this. Yeah. So it's not quite right. I mean, that'll work, but would you really do it that way? Huh. Huh. Like this. See, I would always do this with a seam right here. I would have done it like this, I think. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, Beverly, I can. So if I do that and then turn it, then it's clean. Because they don't have you do it that way. All right, fine. All right, so I'm just gonna stitch down my facing. And so this would normally be a blind hem. That's kind of why I was kind of like, ooh, this isn't how I would normally do this. In fact, I think that's not gonna turn out the way I want. At the center front. I'm adjusting this on the fly, so I'm not kind of, I'm not coming at this the way I normally would. We've definitely done this kind of finish at the center front placket at the hem that I'm thinking I'm doing. I don't know. 
know why is it getting dark you know what it is i think it's because <clears throat> it's getting sunnier out Finding Don jeans. <laughs> you don't want this to torque. And you can see some in some places my hem, it, it's got more of the outer fabric turned to the inside than in some places. And I just kind of let that naturally do that because I feel like it, it, if that's how it wants to do it, it's not worth fighting it. Because you might get a weird little wrinkle there that um, will always be there. Especially after it's been washed, you know. Alright, so if I stitch there. Yeah, I guess that's okay. It's okay. I actually feel like the best, let's see if I can. Yeah, see this isn't normally how you would do this. This isn't normally how you would do this. Even with a blind hem. You would normally sew across the bottom here at, and um, right sides together. Taking one for the team here. Um, meaning I just, I'm going to allow a back tack right there at the front because this is not how this pattern would normally be drafted. There would be a notch in the facing. You guys know what I'm talking about? At least it's not glitter. So... This, okay, so let me just see. So right here, right? So this is how we're sewing it, right? This is the facing. Even if this was a blind hem and it was flat, same thing. So now you would fold this over and top stitch it down. And you'd have this little here thing here. So normally what you would do is you, you sew this right sides together This would be a little cutout. You know what I'm talking about? You've seen that little cutout right here? Yeah, it would have been larger, but you could have still do that. You could still do that nice little finish down there. You know? I'm not sh I'm going to try and kind of... And then the reason that makes it kind of nice is that when you go to finish here... See, look, now it's nice and clean. Look at that. Voila, right? Um, then when you go to stitch your placket, I haven't clipped this corner yet because we're not committed quite yet. You don't really need to, but, and that's why there would be like a cutout, a little corner cutout of the facing. So now when you go to stitch this, what you would be doing is you would stitch along your placket, turn right here, and then you have a nice, continuation see yeah so this is this isn't actually correct ha <laughs> I'm saying it <laughs> it's not correct this is why I'm confused because every time I'm looking at this I'm like this isn't how this goes this isn't how this goes they they probably didn't want to do that because it probably seemed confusing to explain and they are not really about um, taking like doing a ton of, they like minimal instruction. You know what I mean? And so they, they may, that may be kind of their thing. They like minimal instruction because it leaves less, I mean, I was about to say it leaves less room for interpretation, but come on. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to like criticize them. I'm just saying like, um, it would be a nicer finish to do it this way. 
And the reason I, I kind of am adamant about that is because if you're doing a facing as a hem on a dress and a double folded sewn placket, you're already in the genre of doing a, a nice finish. So you wouldn't, I mean, I know they would have done the blind hem, but then you would have, you would have still had this weird placket thing. So they're just getting away from it with doing the blind hem, I guess. Maybe Michelle's right. So anyway, I'll stop harping on it. But will I? <laughs> yeah, so we want to put this right sides together right here. <clears throat> so I'm just folding it over. I'm, I'm kind of struggling, I know. I'm just folding it over right here. So I've, I've got my placket folded over once. And I'm just going to sew right above this facing seam. That's kind of what I'm doing. It's a little easier from this side. Now, the only thing you got to watch out for is that your placket is going to match left to right. But we haven't finished the neckline yet, so we do have a little bit of wiggle room. Right, Beverly? I know. See, because that just looks so nice. You know? And then all of this, this right here, the pattern piece would look like this. Like that. And this right here would have been shorter. That's how it would have looked. If only magnets could attract glitter. Yeah. All right, and then you would do this. You would have done your placket, zoom all the way down the front. You would have come down here and you would have turned the corner. Except that they do blind him. I know, I know, I'm, I know that's not how they designed this, but So I, you can't really see it, but it is nice, a nice little continuous stitch. And then all you have open is this, and this is what they would whip stitch shut if you felt compelled for certain fabrics. Yeah, that's what I think too, Michelle. I, I think like um, their way works, but this is kind of a nice way to finish it. And I think that um, I'm more in the camp of, I have more incentive to finish the garment if I don't have to hand sew a big, a long blind hem. And I think personally, I think anything that gets people to finish the garment is a better solution because then they're posting it on social media, you know? Right. I mean, if, if I were looking at it from that standpoint, I hate it when my stitching lines up on this side, but it doesn't line up on this side. That's such a pet peeve. And let's see if I can get my back tack in the navy blue, not on the white of the flower. Okay, what did I just lose over here? Where's the navy? Okay, there's the white flower right there, okay. <laughs> I think anything that gets you to be able to finish the garment is the way to go. Like, even for me, like, when I hear of people saying, uh, oh, I have X number of things that just need buttons and buttonholes, <laughs> I want them to send them to me. I don't want to do them, but I don't like the fact that they're not finished, you know? All right, so let's just take a second just to look at our placket and see how it's lining up. Just so we're aware and we don't forget before we get to the neckline. So I'm just going to line them up top to bottom. Oh, well, that looks pretty good. 
Okay, so sleeves. So I'm not doing the cap sleeve. Um, I feel kind of bad about that because there's binding involved and we all know how much I like binding. I'm just gonna do a French seam on this underarm so I can keep, keep sewing. Okay. So when you do the cap sleeve, you fold it in half and then you sew it between the notches of the armhole and then you're gonna bind finish the entire armhole because the seam of the cap sleeve shows to the outside world, um, like just looking up into your garment sometimes. And so usually you would, you still need to bind finish the entire armhole. I, I think you get away with it, with surging, but um, it's really hard to finish the edge of the armhole by overlocking, turning, and top stitch. That won't be possible. You you have to bind it. You're gonna have to do binding. Night, Louise. Sleep well. Time for you to pack up. Wouldn't it be so fun if we had like a sewing retreat? I saw a place in Oregon that rents itself out just for that. For crafting retreats. You guys all want to come to Oregon? <laughs> all right, so I'm going to put a um, easing stitch in this sleeve because I know it has a ton of ease. You're learning a lot today? Well, that's good, Elizabeth. There's a lot of really good uh, skills in projects that are more of traditional garments. I don't think a lot of us wear a lot of garments like this, and nor are there a lot um, being sewn. But it's honestly where all the traditional sewing skills are at in these like very traditional garments, you know. You'd come to, yeah, Libby would come to Oregon. Is that what that yes is for? Like someone mentioned it. It might have been Ray saying, I know you might not want to organize something like that, but that'd be kind of cool. I wouldn't mind organizing something like that. I think a, a, like a sewing retreat type of thing would be, I'd be totally down for that. That doesn't even bug me to organize something like that. I've never organized one, but I'm sure that we could figure it out together. All right, so I'm just kind of pulling my threads to kind of gather it up a little bit or a lot. We could bring UFOs. Maybe we could have like class or something I don't know it's a long way for some folks to come <laughs> and there's you know fabric stores around there so there could be like a, a fabric shopping field trip I love the idea of this Okay, um, this is my back of my sleeve. So, if this is the back of my sleeve. Oh my gosh, I did my, I did my French seam backwards. <laughs> oh man, you guys, I still have the collar and collar stand and I'm getting punchy. I can do it. It's almost two o'clock. Yeah, <laughs> no, Deborah, you're right. <laughs> oh man. That's so weird because when I put it in, I 
something something in the back of my head kind of kind of did something you know what I mean and and I was like no it's fine I, I looked at it and I was like it's fine it wasn't fine I was thinking oh well I can see the wrong side and that's the correct way to do it but what I meant in, to be doing was putting it wrong sides together <laughs> good thing it's short huh I'm sitting here trying to save time by doing a French seam on the underarm of the sleeve and not surging it. And here we are. Yeah, you would do it too with Serena? That's awesome. That's kind of near Sydney too. I wonder if she'd be interested. Yeah, this, this place looked like it was set up for a quilting retreats. So they have like tables and um, irons, um, cutting stuff i think it's attached to a fabric store but more of a quilting oriented one do you do that all the time you knew huh <laughs> you're like wait <laughs> well I, it's like i was pretty happy that i felt ready for the stream today i was like because because here's the deal you guys yesterday i had to help cricket with an appointment so I drove into town for the appointment, and then as I was coming home, see there's two ways to go to Paradise from Chico. You can go from Chico up to Paradise, or you can go out towards Oroville, and then towards my house, and go up to Paradise. The whole time I left that appointment, I was like, you're going up to Paradise, you're not going home. Going up to Paradise, you're not going home. And um. And it's kind of six and one half dozen of the other. Like, it doesn't matter if I go towards home and go up. It's a, it's about the same. So it's not like it's a big deal. But I did that. I accidentally went home. I was like, oh, my gosh. I, after chanting that in my head, I still got on the freeway to come home. And so as I was, like, as I was getting closer and closer to home, I was like, you could just Go up to, I mean, your, your office is five miles past here. No big deal, you know. But then I was like, you know, it's 3 o'clock. It was 3 o'clock. And so I was thinking, it was 3 or 3.30, and I was just like, do we really want to go into the office right now? Because you'll be here till 7 if you go right now. And so I yesterday had the presence of mind to at least be like, oh, everything's set up for the stream. We're fine just in case we don't get to go home after this appointment. And so that was in the back of my head. So I ended up staying. I went to home and I was like, you know what? This is great. And I got I got to reply to email. I got to do all kinds of stuff. The dogs were in a tizzy that I was home. And so when I got here today, I was a little later than usual. But I was like, that's okay. We've already set all this stuff up. Back. Back. I don't know why I keep flipping this back and forth and back and forth. And, um, but then I got here and I was like, but what if I want to use the serger? I got to set up a camera for that. But then I needed it for the iron too. So then I worked all on that and I was so proud that I got it all sorted out. And then I was like, oh my gosh, your machine still has cream thread on it. You haven't changed your needle and you forgot to cut the interfacing out. <laughs> so all this time I'm like, oh, you're all set up. This is great. And I wasn't at all. <laughs> That's my long story. <laughs> Oh gosh, right? Jeans pockets. Totally, Libby. Yeah, I always want my jeans pocket fabric to face out and I always end up doing it the wrong way. You've probably been here when I've switched it because I so add, I really like it that way. Yeah, totally, Barbara. Blind stitch foot is really great. I just don't have it on this machine. Yeah, but I agree. That is That is the faster way to do it. Um, you don't have to have one. All right, so I'm not sure if my shoulder seam, oh, it, does, it should actually. My shoulder seam should line up because this is how I lined it up. All right, so here we go. I'm going to set in a sleeve. I wasn't going to, Beverly. I was going to use a serger just to save some time today because I'm doing the whole dress. That was the, that was the vote. I just did the underarm just to save time, you know? All right, so I'm just kind of looking at it. See how much ease is in my sleeve? There's a lot. 
But see, it feels like less back here. So maybe I want to... All right, well, let's just go for it. Yeah, blind hemming on your machine, it's actually, it's more confusing than it is hard. But once you get the hang of it, you kind of never forget how to do that. It's it's pretty it's pretty easy and satisfying. I had to do it a lot at the tailor shop, and so I got pretty good at that. And then um, I also they had a blind hemming machine too. That thing was flipping fast though. But if I was doing like a a really small sleeve, I wouldn't use the blind hem machine. It was just too. It was too small of a space and, and fast. I just did it with a zigzag. All right. I, I don't use pins because it's all gathered up. I just find it easier. I don't know why. Um, I find that when the pieces are separate, it allows me to kind of position them. But what I'm kind of fiddling with right now is I feel like I have more gathers in the front than the back. And I'm just kind of double checking that. Because if I do, maybe I would allow the shoulder notch to go a little bit towards the back like this. Because it's this sleeve wasn't from this garment. I'm kind of breaking rules there all these threads. So I'm just sewing right, or not right, but I would say right next to, but just to the left of this gathering stitch so that the gathering stitch won't show. And then I'm sewing, um, there's no tucks. So the, the fabric is gathered up, but it, I didn't gather it up to the point where tucks would start appearing in this little gathering stitch here. Boy. Maybe I could zoom in for you guys instead of lowering that. Yeah, exactly, Beverly. <laughs> yeah, we could have Zoom meetups too, Ray. Totally. The virtual travelers. And speaking of Zoom meetups, there's a few of you in a Zoom, the Patreon Zoom today at four. Ray's got an activity planned. I don't have an activity. I'll probably be eating. <laughs> I brought watermelon. All right, so there we go. So see, there's all these little gathers here, but there weren't any tucks in that gathering stitch, so that'll be fine. I don't find the threads on this serger to be as bad as my old one. All right, so I'm going to take out my basting stitch or the easing stitch just because I like to, and then it also makes sure that it won't show on the right side. You don't have to do that if you're setting in a sleeve. Um, and if you are setting in sleeve, I have dedicated videos on how to do this with or without French seam. So I have a French seam one. I know people really like that one. I had the nicest comment from someone yesterday saying, oh my gosh, I was just about to cry doing this. <laughs> this is great. I'm like, yay, don't cry. All right, so that's one. <clears throat> Bye, Serena. Nice seeing you. Have a good weekend. For once, my sleeve underarm can press towards the back, where I usually make it press towards the front, but it's just because this side seam is pressing towards the front because of the pocket. So it's kind of cool. No, it's a chain stitch. Hi, Debbie. How's it going? Very different Debbie, right? You're here for a few. We've been here for a bit, but we still have the collar collar stand to go. 
I'm just setting in this last sleeve, which I added. Yeah, so the um, blind hemming machine is, it's a chain stitch. And if you've ever seen, yeah, the inside of tailored pants, it looks like a chain stitch. And if you nick it, it comes undone. <laughs> Barbara's right, kind of, or Beverly. Yeah, one wrong move, exactly. So like women who have tailored pants and say they wear heels and their heel gets caught in it, it's kind of a disaster, both for them because they might fall <laughs> Or they will snag it and make it, make it start separating from the pant. I've seen that a few times. Am I press? I'm hoping I'm pressing this uh, side front seam the right way or side back. I don't know where I'm at right now. <laughs> so I'm just staying to the left of my easing stitch. And I forgot to line it up to the shoulder, but let's do that now. But I think I moved the notch just a little bit past it. And it lined up a little better. You want all the ease in your sleeve to be at the top, not at, on, at the bottom where it's easier to set. It would be nice if it were like that, but it's just not. You try not to sew on your knees, easing stitch if you want to remove it because you won't be able to if you pierce it. A lot of dress, eh? Can you guys see okay? maintain my machine's not really sewing nicely and I think it's this thread oh god that's not my gathering stitch where is it I like it when I remember to pull on the wrong side of the fabric because that way I can see my threads you know No, on a on a blind hemming machine, it's a chain stitch. And Beverly was saying like on men's trousers that yeah, that you can you can accidentally pull one thread like if you accidentally, I don't know, like if one of those little threads gets cut or something, who knows how, then the whole seam can come undone, the whole hem. I can't find my uh, easing stitch thread. I just like broke both ends. And I want it. Where is it? There we go. Yeah, clear filament, exactly. I've seen that too. That stuff is so fragile. It's like really strong like fishing line and then also because it's not very tacky, it it's almost like it wants to come unraveled, right? I know what you're talking about. Okay, so I'm going to overlock this armhole. Just getting rid of all this, this easing stitch. It helps it relax better too. And then we're gonna do collar collar stand. I love doing collar collar stand. In fact, we should bring it over here and trim off that seam allowance. You have unraveled a few pant hems. I think polyamide, yeah, polyamide and polyester are, are very similar. Like they're both made from plastic. Can you guys see okay? Yeah, I think so. Be careful. I 
I don't think in my video I used my serger. I try and kind of push these little, this little ruffled edge towards so it's more perpendicular to the seam. But my serger probably will push it away a little bit. And make sure when you do this that your garment is above the machine like this so that the circle of the armhole is like this. Don't do it the other way. It's really hard to not, um, to miss your dress, like to not cut it. And when I get to the end there, I try and surge over where I started, but try not to nick those threads with my blade. The easing, I only put in one easing stitch and then I sewed just to the left of it. So the easing stitch was right here. And then that's my seam. And I just removed that stitch. So I just put in one since I'm not really trying to gather it up. Staples. <laughs> That's just my easing st stitch. I just want to get rid of it. Constantly trying to smooth out the garment underneath so it doesn't creep under the blade. trimming off like a small quarter of inch. So here I'm at the beginning. I'm gonna go over my stitching a little bit, but not nick any of it with the blade so it's nice and smooth. Looks pretty good. It's a little tuck right there. A little messy right there. All right, so let's trim our collar collar stand while we're over here. Gotta get those pattern pieces. You don't have to do this, but I find it makes it so much easier to sew in a collar and collar stand, no matter what. There's probably some sort of tailoring, you know, taboo against doing this, but we aren't tailoring. <clears throat> and this collar and collar stand, they're not even drafted differently from one another. So this collar top and under collar are the same size I think two rows is fine you can do that I'd like a weight I'm just gonna grab a little pattern weight <laughs> I think when you use two rows you get an a sm even smoother probably and it gives you more control. So go for it. <laughs> you scotch tape. Oh, for hemming pants at work. <laughs> I'm like, to put in your sleeve? 
So if you do this, make sure you transfer all of your notches. My uh, ruler hit and stuff. I'm trimming three eighths of an inch off. So yeah, does it feel like a lot? Yes. Oh, you sew between them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's actually a pretty good method. I like that. Okay, so I did that edge. And then we'll do this one. And then we'll do, I'm gonna do my other short one so I don't get confused at all of which one I've done. Oh my gosh, I've never heard that bird before. Um, and let's see, we've already done that edge, so we're now going to do this one. Libby, are you saying you're more productive than me? Wow. I see how it is. <laughs> My gosh, I've never heard this bird call before. So my sister right before I streamed said, hey, you know, you did you see that squirrel table? I got mom and so my sister got my mom for her birthday back in February, a, a little miniature picnic table. You've probably seen these for, for squirrels and it's really the cutest thing. And, um, and my mom has two squirrels, I think three actually now, and they have a whole routine and you know, she knows them really well and blah, blah, blah. And, um, so my sister got her little picnic table and they love it. And they actually sit at this little miniature picnic table eating. And so my sister got one and it just arrived and they also just got a kitten and um, he is loving it. She sent me this little video and the squirrels were sitting at the little table right outside the sliding door. Oh my God, it was so cute. The cat was just like, what is this? Yes, Elizabeth, I am cutting down. Sorry, I'm trying to watch chat. It's a little hard. Yeah, right, Barbara? It does work for both gathers and sleeping. The two rows. I love using two rows for gathers, too. Yeah, so I'm trimming off three-eighths of an inch. You don't have to do this. But it really does make it so much easier. Kind of eyeballing it over here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What? What? There we go. Look at that. It's not very smooth. It's a little awkward. Um, I have a very uneven surface here. Can you guys hear that bird? <laughs> Barbara. You go without? You go from either using two rows to nothing? Dang, you like living on the edge. <laughs> I don't even think I do it without the easing stitches. There's a couple I 
I shouldn't say that. I, I have definitely done that. Yeah. But then I've also not had it go well. So, all right. So um, we're going to sew around the perimeter first. This is kind of an interesting shaped collar. Quarter inch seams. Uh, and if you also wanted to do one thing better, it would be to make the under collar uh, about an eighth of an inch smaller on the three perimeter sides. I'm kind of oversimplifying that uh, instruction, but <clears throat> I'll tell you more in a second. Before. My husband's really into birds too. Um, all right, so if you want a top and an under collar, and if you have a top collar and an under collar, which we do, but if you had two separate separate pattern pieces um, and the um, under collar was a little bit smaller, what happens is it makes the the top collar kind of roll to the underside, and it just looks nicer. Um, hands down, it just looks nicer. And so what you do is what I like to do is I'll do a little washable marker on here. I like to trim off about, well, it would be on this edge here, sorry, about a 16th to a, maybe an eighth of an inch. I would just do like a little, more like a fat 16th of an inch. And I would go to nothing at this point here, right? So 16th to nothing here. And then I would do the same thing here, nothing and then 16th, a fat 16th all along this edge to nothing at the point and the same thing 16 to nothing so it's shaped kind of like that right and then you sew it lining up all your raw edges you sew it together and what it'll do is pull that top color around merlinette oh he just stopped Really? So there's this uh, Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign for a, um, it's a bird seed feeder and it actually films the bird and identifies it. I can't remember what it's called, but it's pretty cute. My husband's like, look at this. They had already something like $8 million raised. They're going to be fine. <laughs> as long as they can come to market with it, right? All right, so I'm just turning my corners. What is that bird? All right, so let's iron this. Yeah, it's not like a cheap too. It's kind of a, a brrr. All right. You have seen that bird feeder? Are you going to get one? I was telling my friend who's really into birds, I was like, well, what if we, because they have them in bundles. Like you can buy three. They're not cheap. But, you know, if you buy a few, you get a better deal. And I was like, oh, I could get my mom one and my husband one, and then she could get one, and we could get a better deal if we all three. And she was like, I think I'll wait. <laughs> I was like, darn. <laughs> all right. Last few steps of our blue dress. I'm so glad you pronounced you, uh, Corrected me on the pronunciation of this. <laughs> oh, right, Eliza. M Eliza, have you seen Mark Rober's um, Squirrel Obstacle Course on YouTube? <laughs> it's pretty funny. I think he just came out with another version of it. 
So see, I'm trying to get this seam to kind of pull under just so that, you know, you don't see this on the edge of my collar, that little edge. And it would be easier if I just had a top and an under collar. Yeah, it's pretty cute. Definitely pandemics, you know, like, oof, we're home. He, he's pretty clever, that guy. All right, that's still lining up there. I, I was just trying to get it a little closer to my raw edge up here. Since remember, I only have a quarter inch seam allowance now. I can't really squander some of it. But I don't want my seam to show. All right. Let's take a drink of water. Yeah, family pack. Presents for everybody. Okay. Let's put our center notch back in here. I only have a quarter seam allowance, so I gotta be careful here. Oof, I cut this fairly asymmetrically. The dress is looking good. Let's, so this is my outer collar and I want, if that's my outer collar, I want this interfaced one to go to my under collar and this to go to the inside of the garment. So to be clear, this is the non-interfaced stand on top of the interfaced collar and the uninterfaced collar is to the interface stand because this right here is how the collar is going to finish when it's um, being worn and so we want the nice side of the collar stand and the nice side of the collar to face out oh bird net okay are you into birds elizabeth that's pretty cool I've learned a lot, you know, being with, with Michael because he's really into it. Because they don't give a notch, or they kind of did, but I couldn't really tell which notch was for my size of my pattern. I'm just going to start at the center and go to the end. This way I can make sure I can get them symmetrical. Because I don't have a starting point down here. And if you don't have a starting point, this is how you can kind of get around that. So try and keep your collar stands the same, lined up here. They may not want to be because you have all these thicknesses going and you know, like that whole thing of the feed dogs and presser foot kind of making things move at different rates. Plus this one's not interfaced, the other one is. The other one could have shrink a little when you interfaced it. There's a lot of variables here. So just try and keep all these things lined up. Try and get your, oh. Try and keep your bobbin full. <laughs> Whole bobbin in one. Yeah, right, Elizabeth. Yeah, people are really into it. I think it's pretty neat. We get so many at this place. We used to live somewhere where we had a lot of birds. And um, we have more here than we've ever had before. And we're, we're constantly in discussion right now about, like, because we're doing a lot of... Um, fire prevention stuff right now but our properties probably has one of the most the higher bird populations in our little neighborhood because we have so much living like trees and bushes and things because we're between two creeks and it's like gosh you know I really don't want to take away their home but 
Nobody will have a phone home if uh, it's, you know, prone to fire. All right, so see how my cutting was pretty bad right there? This is kind of how I'm smoothing it out. My scissors are over at the serger. Got to use these big clunky things. All right, so now we're going to... What I should have done was made sure I'm putting it at the same spot. That lined up. You'll have to pull the collar down just slightly to get it to line up with that edge. Just kind of pull it because remember that collar has a curve in it and it's a curve greater than this collar stand seam. See, I didn't sew my on my scrap fabric after I changed my bobbin, so then I get this whole long thread. All right, so let's trim our collar stand or clip it, whatever you like to do. Sometimes I just trim it really close. If it's if I didn't trim off all that seam allowance, then th that's when I would do it. I would just trim it down really close, like to an eighth of an inch. This is a pretty curvy one, so I'm just gonna clip the whole thing. Careful when you're changing thicknesses there. All right, we'll attach it now. Let's just trim this down a little more around the curve. Um, wait a second, let me read that. So the interfaced collar stand is going to go towards the outside. I like it to look nice. So right now, this is how my collar is, if it's flat here, right? So <clears throat> this is the outer collar stand, the one we're going to see, the world is going to see. This is the one that's towards the neck. It doesn't have interfacing. On the collar, it's the reverse. So because the collar is going to fold over like this, this side has the interfacing, this one doesn't. I think a lot of folks put interfacing on both. I think a lot of us put it, flip this, we always put the interface side towards the collar. I've done that lots of times, but this time I'm going to do it this way. I want it nice and crisp to the outside world, you know? All right. Here we go. What is that? <laughs> oh, that's the sleeve. <laughs> I need to have my sleeve still. I was like, I don't recognize that. <laughs> All right, so let's see how we do here. Okay, so we're gonna start from the inside of the garment. Deer and Doe might do it this way too. I like to pull this apart and start, try and get this like nice straight line best I can, you know. This is pretty narrow, that seam allowance there. My pins are going to kind of feel gigantic. Oh, my, my, call, my, uh, label. I'll get the word. All right. The label in. It's only a quarter inch seam allowance. Oh, I need to trim down the seam allowance on my neckline. That would have made it really hard if I hadn't done that. So, you can tell I'm getting punchy if I'm just going to sit here and do it, right? If you do it like this, make sure you go back and do your back stitches at your shoulders. draw it on there if you feel more comfortable doing that okay my 
put my uh, back stitches into my shoulder again. And now I'm going to check my placket length <laughs> again. Because now we're about to set it in stone. And we've already hemmed it. So we don't have any other opportunity to adjust this. And you don't really want it to be hard when you go to do your buttons and buttonholes. Make sure you're trying to, you're pulling each the same amount. It's pretty easy to get this inaccurate. I can actually make it match <laughs> when it doesn't, you know? So I, I gotta be careful. I'm like, my hands are like, hmm, it's close, but I could make it do that. I'm gonna round this little transition to this neck and I'm gonna, this, I knew I'd cut one of those kind of shallow, but I figured better than overdoing it and then you're kind of in this little war of trimming one side than the other, the one side than the other. All right, now we're going to mark our center back again. It's not worth the trouble trying to sew your, your collar with quarter inch seam allowances to a neckline with five eighths. Don't think you can do that easily. It'll it'll be so fiddly, you'll wish you'd just trimmed it off. You, you will not save yourself time, you know? So just trim off on the neckline too. All right, so let's line up our neck. So we're gonna do the inside collar stand to the inside of the garment. I don't have my shoulder notches anymore, but line up your shoulder notches or whatever notches there are. I found the notches, I couldn't really tell what size mine went, where, which one went to my size, so I did not mark them all. I'm counting on the center now only. All right, so that's gonna be our now I'm gonna kind of do the same thing. I'm gonna just start at the center back here. I'm not gonna mark, I'm not gonna do my center, or my front. I'm gonna go for it because I know I'm gonna adjust when I get down there anyway. Now you may, if you had, um, oh, my shoulder seems pointing the wrong way. That's a bummer. Oh well. You might have wanted to put a stay stitch in your neckline depending on your fabric. This poplin's pretty stable, but it's also pretty stretchy, so I probably would have done good to have done that. All right, let's see if we can get our, this is so small. All right, try and keep it all nice and flat. Don't get any tucks in there. And this is what I'm talking about. I always curve this up like this. I don't know why. It just, there's something about when I curve it up like this, it kind of smooths out all of these potential wrinkles. I could even cheat and stretch this to make it not uh, get tucked because it's stretchy, but I, I don't want to do that. You don't want to stretch out your neckline. Night, Ursula. Sleep well. Yeah, no worries. It's getting probably late where you are. Almost done. I kind of open up this collar stand right there. And I'm just trying to nail it right there on that um, seam line of the neck. But I also think it, if your fabrics are kind of thick, it's good to give yourself, maybe let your collar go the seam go past your placket just a tiny 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 bit like maybe the seam itself and then that way it will wrap around your placket a little nicer when you go to do that part okay so now we're gonna do the other side and now we're on the um, dress side
So, you know, one thing I wanted to say was like, oh, I think we actually did talk about it. Okay, wait, where's this? Shoulder seam is pointing the correct way, so let's move that. We kind of talked about the sizing. Not there, There's not a lot of sizes in this dress, so I apologize about that because I thought that there was more sizes in the PDF versions, and I think that might only be on certain styles. And this is one I bought from uh, Needle Sharp on my own. All right, so here we are at the collar stand, with the center front placket. Kind of hard to see what I'm doing, probably. But I'm kind of pulling the placket. Here's, I mean, the collar stand. Here's the collar stand. Kind of pulling it over a little bit, just pulling it down so that I can kind of open up the stand right here. There's the seam. It's fussy. Try and get it nice and flat on the, the machine. And then I laid that placket to the edge. And you may have to fiddle with this after you sew it. You may have to fix it. I'm kind of struggling a little bit. It's good to lift up your presser foot and adjust again. Right in here. Might be easier from this side, but I didn't have that notch. Let's try and smooth out this little stitch here. Make it a little straighter. There we go. All right. So that's the inside of our garment. One shoulder seam pressed the wrong way. <laughs> um, if you want to clip your neckline, now is the time. Personally, I think it help, does help a little bit. But it can also make it a little harder. I'm not going to go into the placket. Black it's straight, not curved. I feel like my presser foot is a little slippery for fabric like this. Maybe it would have uh, been beneficial to use home sewing thread spools rather than these cones. I think that could have helped. You know? <laughs> Thanks, Bray. Yeah, but I still think like, I'm, I am making even more of an effort to just sew things that are available as many people as possible, but it proves the point how hard it is to find things too, you know? There's just not enough. All right, so this is the right side of our dress. So we're looking at the underside of our collar and the um, right side of our collar stand. So I'm going to, boy, this stuff's stiff, really stiff. I'm going to start just lining it all these up and pinning it. This is a very narrow collar stand. Like the, the, the collar stand is the width of the original seam allowance. So you would have both these seam allowances overlapping right now. That would fill it up nicely in there, but it would also be a lot to manage. Let's see if we can figure out where this leads here. If you had your shoulder notch, that'd be a great, another great landmark to use. This uh, interfacing is stiff. <laughs> I really feel it and notice it right now. All right, let's get this in here. kind of walk it around, start training it, and then I kind of settle on where I want this. And I just kind of tuck that in there like that. Just stick that placket up in there. 
Make sure you get this nice curve here. This, I keep thinking this is thread, but it's part of the flower right there. Do you see that? Right here. I keep thinking that's my, like a crooked back stitch of mine, which is totally believable. And um, it's not, it's actually just the print of the flower. Yeah, that is true, Ray. Right? I, what I find really interesting is when um, I have done projects where we found people that were measured all the same and seeing all the people side by side just really proved a point that size just doesn't matter, you know? Like, you can see people that all measure the same and then you see them next to each other and you would never believe they bought the same size. <laughs> you know? I mean, Karen, they're really fiddly. I understand that. That's why I do it from the wrong side to the right side. I find it, then I have complete control over how it's going to end up looking. Maybe the first few times I did it this way, the inside looked pretty bad. and But who cares, right? <laughs> The outside looked good. The only part you have to worry about the inside looking good is right here at the fiddle, most fiddly spot, right? Because your collar might go like this when you're wearing it. So that's the only thing you got to think about. Hopefully you guys can see okay. It's a little dark, huh? Wow. You guys are troopers. Lost a few of you, but probably because you guys had to go to bed. But this means on Wednesday we can sew some underwear. Wish I had a shoulder notch so I knew that that was the spot. But it looks pretty like that's it. See, and I do use pins sometimes. I kind of got to. This um, interfacing is so... Can you see? Like it, It's like even just hard to bend. It's nice though. Like I, I like it. It's, um, it feels like fabric, and it is. But it keeps bo going boing. Doesn't want to give me a crisp edge. So you might want to, you want to make sure that you're pulling your stand so that you know that the other side that we can't see is nice and flat. You don't want to get like a ripple in there. You know, Eliza, when I copied my pajama tank recently, I cut out underwear in the scrap fabric. And I just used the same pattern I used last summer. But they'll sew together like, like almost all underwear pattern. So there's a front and a back and a crotch liner. Um, yeah. And it was a pattern that I copied. I like made it last summer, but it was real, it was identical sewing to a few other patterns. And I got out all my patterns that day when I copied the pajama tank recently and we looked at them all. I'm just pretty eager to use my new serger and cover stitch because I have this idea of how I want to sew them using both those machines and then only having to use this machine at the very end just to tack the seam allowances. This is wider than this right here, so I'm just kind of looking at this, making sure like I don't have anything buckling here. Maybe, ouch. This, the uh, label in the neckline is definitely, it's fighting me. See right there is my label. Let's push it the way it's gonna lay. I can't really roll the seam allowance in my uh, fingers because of the interfacing is kind of stiff. All right, so we're ready to sew. I'm gonna look at it one more time. So make sure that, you know, when you did it, you were pulling this 
so that you don't have like a little blump, you know? We don't like blumps. <laughs> we don't like blumps at all for anything unless it's like, you know, dessert called blump and whatever that is. I don't know. All right, so I'm going to start at the center back neck because nobody sees my start stop here. I'm very repetitive with collars and collar stands because I figure there's probably someone here who hasn't heard me give my spiel. But I don't like back stitches at the neck stand here, especially because if you end up having to adjust this, like take this apart, having the back stitch there is, I don't know, it just doesn't look very nice. So if you can get it away from that center front, I think it looks better. It calls less attention to it. I need a little, there we go. So I'm just trying to keep everything nice and flat. It's worth it right now. Tuck that seam under. I can see a little bit of my stitching there and I'm just pulling my collar stand over it, tight it. I don't like that flower looks like my stitching. All right, and then we're gonna turn. I feel like I could do maybe one more stitch. Could I, could I? Three quarters of a stitch. All right, Sue, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. You're a trooper for staying this long. They're not usually this long. I've been trying to keep the streams to like two hours. But like I said, we all voted and they want to see me do my underwear on, on Wednesday. And I don't have anything scheduled. So thanks for coming and saying hi in chat. <laughs> Collar stand seem to be a little more under, but oof, all this white and pale pink print right here where I'm stitching is a little unfortunate. Every little thing's gonna show. There. I don't know if I like that, but we'll see. Ring around the machine head. All right. Home stretch. Tuck that in there. Pull this over it. The all is so handy for moments like this. collar stand is it's changing in width a little bit it's not critical but you know I didn't uh, top stitch around my collar but you could have sorry about that all right Barbara see ya <laughs> okay so here's how the inside looks oh that looks actually pretty darn good but it doesn't matter if it would have not fallen on this collar stand because it's the outside that matters. You can really see how thick that interfacing is, can't you? All right. The big reveal, we need a um, sleeve hem still. What should I do for a sleeve hem? Hmm. I mean, I have binding. Could I 
roll him this. I wonder if I can roll him this. It's kind of a curve, you know? But I think that would look the best, like a little tiny rolled hem. Let's try it. We'll see. It's a little bit of a curve. I'm going to do a really small one if I can. Small by my standards. I could overlock it, roll it once, and top stitch it, but I don't really like the idea of my hem being able to show, you know, be, um, like looking up. <laughs> Not that anyone's going to do that. Oh, I think this is going to be totally doable because the fabric is kind of stretchy. Perfect. I got a little bit of a blump there. Right there. scissors. Yeah, that'll work. Right? That looks, that looks pretty good. Yeah. And then, um, this one. realized it. I really love these. Have you guys seen those like pretzel? They're like, um, it's as if they took a pretzel and they put it through under a steamroller and squished it flat. Have you seen those? I can't remember the name of the brand. And they come in different flavors. I haven't been a big fan. I like pretzels, but I haven't been a big fan of most of them. They have this garden vegetable one that's good, but I never find any more. I think they got rid of it. And then um, then they have like plain and probably probably a garlic one, which I'm not a big fan of. But they have a salt and pepper one, and it's so good. And they, I, they were finally in stock. And so I got that, and I have watermelon. And then I'll probably have like a lunch too. All right, let's put it on the dress form. Right? <laughs> 